अरे फादर बाबू हेलो हाय पीटर हाउ आर यू फादर बाबू गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबॉडी यस आई एम ऑडिबल यस यस यू आर ऑडिबल ओके ओके माय सेल्फ एंड चंद्रकांत बोथ आर देयर कहां जा रहे हैं now we are going to on place we'll settle down there okay we'll settle down okay okay uh, ready yeah okay great yeah. anybody else from patna father arokya sami sj Hello, I am from Delhi, right? Delhi man. Yes. Ah, Delhi. Yes, Delhi man. I. Yes, yes. yes. Good morning, everyone. Yes. Good morning, father. Good morning, father. Oh, sorry, father. I think so. From Patna is father Arok Sami. No, no, no. It's father Delhi. Father Arok.
In the quiet corridors of Loyola Vocational Institute, an inspiring transformation is shaping the future. It's more than just a school, it's a sanctuary of dreams. Each dawn here brings not just light, but the promise of a better future. Welcome to a place where potential meets opportunity. Where determination knows no bounds. As the, the sun quiet rises, corridors of so do the aspirations of Institute, these young minds. An inspiring in the realm of computer codes, they find their voice. Amidst wires and circuits, they discover their power. In the artistry of beauty culture, they embrace confidence. And in the warmth of ovens and stoves, they craft not just delicious treats, but also dreams of a brighter tomorrow. I am the founder director of this institute. We started it in 1995. When I was the principal of different schools, I had a vision to start something for the dropout and failures. So when I came here, and there was nothing here, it was more of a forest, jungle, an old school, and uh, I started building from the scratch, and I thought of starting something for skill training line, for which I had gone to Germany to see some of the skill training institutes. And I came here, started this institute with five girls and three sewing machines in two kilometers away in a Harijan village under a tree. We had no building. Within two years, uh, I had more than 100 students and moved over to an old building in the campus here. And we built up this new setup within two years, the Loyola Vocation Institute. St. Xavier School and I was principally here also. Meanwhile, we started this technical training, skill training under the National Open School. So we got recognition both for academic program 
and vocational. In the academic program under the NIOS, we prepare hundreds of students for class 10 and class 12 exams, online and offline classes here. And then we started the vocational skill training also under the NIOS. We have at present about 12 different courses here and uh, like tailoring, fashion designing, beauty parlor, computer, basic, advanced, typing shorthand, electricians, radio TV technician, all types of courses we started. My name is Pabna, I am from Himachal and I have been doing a course for one year. I have learned a lot of things from ma'am here, I have learned a lot of hair treatments, makeup, manicure, pedicure, facial, hair spa, smoothening, keratin and uh, makeup bhi kar rahi hu yahan ka acha laga hai is school mein meri beti bhi padhti hai fifth standard mein saint javier mein aur mujhe ma'am bhi achhi lagti hai father bhi acche hain aur support bhi karte hain har cheez mein iske baad kahin job karungi ya fir apna khud ka saloon shuru karna hai yahan join karne se pehle maine jrs Gene Center में join किया था तो अनिशा में हमने कहा कि scholarship open है बच्चे के लिए तो मैंने apply किया था वहाँ से तो उन्होंने scholarship देकर मुझे यहाँ पर admission करवाया और मैं म्यांमार से आई हूँ मैं आगे अपना boutique खोलना चाहती हूँ और उससे भी आगे कर पाऊँगी तो मैं अपने खुद की brand बनाना चाहती हूँ Loyola Vocational Institute isn't just a building it's a nurturing heaven where dreams take flight it's in these classrooms that ambitions are born, and in these workshops that futures are meticulously crafted. The laughter of students mingles with the hum of machines, creating a symphony of progress and hope. The biggest achievement of this institute is that it is meant for the poor and the dropout. <coughs> I was more interested in the failures and dropouts so that they get a second phase of life or second life to start and to complete and to find a meaningful existence, contribute their life to the society. So I do not want them begging around and looking around. So we encourage entrepreneurship to start on their own if they can. And we had number of cases where students started their own electrical or radio or TV repair and they employed other people. So it was sort of entrepreneurship where multiplied the jobs. Every year we get about 300 boys and girls passing out from different vocational courses. Another 300 to 400 in the National Open School class 10 and 12. Many find their own employment or they, strike, uh, they find a job in any other factories or any offices according to the trade they have received. At present, we have got <clears throat> more than 350 students in 12 different courses, more than 110 in computer alone, which is very popular, and also beauty parlor, very popular, lots of demand. My satisfaction is that these poor dropout are enabled to stand on their own and find a meaningful job and contribute to the society. But this journey is not solitary, it's a collective endeavor. We need your hand in this endeavor of transformation. Your contribution, no matter how small, fuels our mission. It's not just a donation, it's an investment in countless futures, a testament to the belief that every life deserves a chance. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, your step today can pave the path for a thousand dreams. Be a beacon of hope, a catalyst for change. Join us in this sacred mission of empowering lives and uplifting communities. The sky is not the limit, it's just the beginning. With your support, Loyola Vocational Institute will continue to be the canvas where dreams are painted and futures are sculpted.
Well, shall we start? No. Please start. Warm good, good morning to all the participants. Good Welcome morning. Good to... morning. Thank you. Good morning to all. Welcome, Nikhil sir. Welcome to the online workshop, Building a Sustainable Future, the Power of CSR for Domestic Fundraising, hosted by JRDS Development Programs, New Delhi. I am Shiru Joseph, Manager, Project Support, and Data Analyst, your host for this session. Before we begin exploring CSR's transformative potential for domestic fundraising, allow me to provide a brief overview of our organization. Caring through sharing serves as the development arm of the Jesuit Research and Development Society a renowned social initiative with a far-reaching presence across spanning 15 states. We are committed to uplifting underprivileged individuals by providing them with access to educational and vocational training, thereby fostering the foundation for dignified livelihoods. Since our inception in 2006, we have remained steadfast in our dedication to nurturing human potential at every stage of life. Today, we all delve into CSS role in striving sustainable change and fostering community development. Let us explore innovative, strat innovative strategies and inspire collective action toward a more equitable, sustainable future. Once again, I extend my heartfelt welcome to each of you. Let us embark on this journey together towards building a brighter and more sustainable future. With this note, I invite the Director of Development Office JCC and also the director of JRDS Development Programs, Dr. Sebastian L. Raj, for welcome address. Thank you. Good morning, friends. I'm very happy to welcome all of you for this online session this morning on the theme CSR Fundraising for Sustainable Development. This is being offered to us by a renowned person, Mr. Nikhil Pant. Welcome to you, sir, and your team. Let me say a few words about our speaker, our resource person, and also a few words about the session itself. Mr. Nikhil Pant is widely recognized as one of the principal thought leaders on the subject of CSR. He specializes in CSR grant making, grant management, monitoring and evaluation frameworks, impact assessment, project management, etc. And is currently involved in compliance to impact with sustainability, advising governments, corporates, NGOs, and academia on CSR and sustainable development. Mr. Nikhil has three decades of experience in implementation, training, advocacy, grant management, strategy and policy formulation of development programs. Currently, he is also the chief executive of ReHR and a CSR advisor to trainer to various corporates, organizations and institutions. Now, we are waiting to hear from him. Before that, a few words about this workshop itself. This workshop will delve into the critical relationship between corporate or social responsibility, compliance with local regulations, and fundraising campaigns at the local level. The I request all the participants to Put, to you, put it on mute so that the, there is no disturbance. The, re, the sessions will revolve around several key <laughs> It includes navigating through leadership, the landscape of CSR for a sustainable future and better social impact, partnerships and collaboration, 
legal compliance and risk management, community center centric approaches, and finally also ethical fundraising practices. Our resource person will touch upon all these things. At the end of the session, we'll have a few minutes for clarification or questions, which our resource person will be happy to respond to. Now I request Mr. Nikhil Pant to begin the input session. A very good morning, everybody. Uh, am I audible, Father? Yes, yes, you are. Uh, thank you, Father, for uh, your kind words and thank you, Shinu. I can see some of my other students are also there in the society, I guess. I can see Tanvi is also there somewhere. I could just see her. Uh, <clears throat> it is so nice to, uh, you know, uh, finally be engaging uh, with your organization, Father. Uh, we had met some time back and, uh, you know, as they say, better late than never. <laughs> Uh, we are very excited to be uh, engaging with this entire, uh, I think, large audience. I'm seeing more than 120 people have joined in. Uh, so today what I will do is because uh, I was reading the document that Shinu had sent me and the broad background of the audience. Uh, I will do like a nursery class also. I will take it right from the very beginning of CSR so that um, everybody understands the letter and spirit behind the law. Because if we, and I have my presentation, I've got various documents to share and some of them I will also email to Shinu and he, you all can you know have copies of that. Uh, <clears throat> it is important that in the initial five, seven minutes, I am able to set the right context uh, in front of all of you. So, uh, before I begin, and I think, you know, I would request uh, all of you to respond to me on the chat box. Uh, and in the first question, I am just doing a small need assessment. Just want to check how many of you know Section 135 Companies Act 2013. And I know my, my students would be there, but the students need not respond because they've already learned it. Uh, but those from the, the, the society here, from the entire organization here, all the participants, can you just 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 message or just chat or put in put a say a thumbs up to convey to me? Have you heard that there is a a, a legislation called Section One Thirty Five? So um, can you all respond, please? I want to I want to see. I would like this to be. I would like this to be very interactive. So can I can I see some thumbs up or no or maybe thumbs down or whatever? so that uh, I get a sense as to how many of you are aware about the CSR legislation. So you can type also. I can see no sir is saying no, no, no. Not aware. Tina says no. Okay, okay. So uh, majority are kind of responding by a no. You And the students can also respond, you know, so there is no worries. I know who they are. Uh, okay. All right. So generally, I'm sensing uh, that the response is a no. So that means I have to go very basic to begin with. And I just cannot start talking about the law and the legislation and the clauses. And those may need to evolve over a period of time. What I'm also aware is this, that uh, that the Jesuits are doing some amazing work. I've been to, been to some of your St. Xavier's. Uh, I went to say XLRI Bhubaneswar last year with HCL Foundation. And I think I'd met the father there. Uh, we are all aware about the, the amazing work, uh, Loyola. I was seeing the Loyola institution being shown on the video. So uh, the work that you people are doing is absolutely amazing and outstanding. It is evident. What we all have to understand is that CSR has got two pillars. And it will be good if some of you and all of you can have a paper and a pen or a pa or a book or a copy or a pen in your hand, please. Uh, I will give you some inputs which will help you create uh, some understanding, some foundational understanding of CSR. Because if you have a foundational understanding of CSR, I will then slowly build it up from there. So uh, two key pillars that you have to understand under the CSR framework and keep writing some of these jargons that I use. Some of these jargons are very important. These are the legal jargons. So there is this Section 135 Companies Act 2013. You can write this down. 
Section 135, Companies Act 2013. This was rolled out from 1st of April 2014. And we are about to hit 1st of April 2024. So that means 10 years have gone by. So 10 years is a decade. It's a long, long time. And hundreds and thousands and lakhs of crores of rupees have been spent on CSR. There is a government website called csr.gov.in. You can write it down. And Tanvi, you you are there, you know, one of my students. You can just type, just, just help me like a volunteer also. If you can just mention the CSR website on the chat box, csr.gov.in. This is a very important website that you all need to refer to. Then there's another very important website called mca.gov.in mca.gov.in this is the ministry of corporate affairs so the controlling ministry is the ministry of corporate affairs the legislation is made by parliament then the first point number one you can write the legislation is made by parliament then there is a number two you can write and tanvi you can just type on the chat box and help me number two point you can write is the ministry there's a nodal ministry it is called ministry of corporate affairs Every law, when it is enacted, there is a nodal ministry which, which has to then execute it. Now, within this ministry, there is a think tank called Indian Institute of Corporate Affairs. I was there uh, when the institute was, you, you're actually at the very, very, you know, you know in, in the process of rolling this out. Now, so the law from parliament emanates and then there is it is then rolled out through a, a controlling ministry, which is Ministry of Corporate Affairs. Its think tank is IICA. After that becomes the eligibility of companies. There are 20 to 25,000 companies who are eligible and who qualify for CSR. Now, how does one qualify? I will come to the law. We started the session. Uh, can I continue, Shinu? Hello? Yes, sir. We have to wait a little while or we can continue? No, no, we can continue. You have okay, screen okay. share access here. Uh, you've given me screen share access. No? Okay, good. Good. Thank you, man. So, uh, there are, after Parliament, there is the legislation, after the legislation, the legislation by Parliament, then there is the Ministry of Corporate Affairs, and then there are 25,000 companies about, 20 to 30,000, you can say on an average is 25,000, who are spending about 25 to 30,000 crores every year, 20,000 to 30,000 crores every year, and in one of the brief sessions after the tea break, Mudit, my colleague, will present a small data analysis to show where this money is going. Yes. You all need to know where the money is going. Yes. You can send it. Then you will see, uh, uh, Shinu, if you can just mute, I think there is some disturbance coming and I am kind of it's breaking my flow. Thank you. Now, this amount of money is flowing through these companies, level three, level one parliament, level two MCA, level three companies. Within these companies, there are teams that work on CSR, on grant giving. They are headed by a head CSR. Beneath that level comes you, the NGO. Now you need to know and beneath you come the beneficiaries. So this is from parliament to beneficiaries, from parliament to MCA, MCA to the company headquarters, which is the board of the companies, from the board of the companies, it is to the execution team of the company, from the execution head CSR team, it goes on to the delivering NGO. That's where your organization also comes in. And from you, the benefit should percolate to the ground, to the beneficiaries. Now, is that clear? And keep responding on the chat box by saying a yes or a no. Are you understanding the organizational structure of the law? In any organization, you have an organizational structure. I'm first trying to tell you the organizational structure of the law. I want response. Arif, thank you for responding. Yes, yes, yes. So from the no's, I should be. As we proceed, we will find more of yeses coming in, hopefully. Fingers crossed. The idea should be that I make you understand what is the organization of the law? How is it structured? And where are you? So your is level number, one is parliament, two is ministry, three is corporate board, three A is corporate board, three B is the head CSR and you are at number four and number five is the beneficiary. Now if at number four you understand number three, 
very well. And there are two things that you must understand. Number three, number three is the company. That the company will give you funds and make you a partner if you can fulfill two things. And again, Tanvi, if you can write them down for me. One is compliance to CSR law. And number two is impact to the outcome, impact of the outcome. One is compliance to CSR law. And two, Tanvi will write, is out impact of the, the spending. If I, as an organization, can fulfill these two impacts, these two requirements, then the game is on for me. Then the game is on for me and I can actually, uh, I can actually start engaging with corporates. So, so this is very, very important to understand that there is a legal framework, there is a hierarchy, there is a structure into it. Now, what is the meaning of compliance and what is the meaning of impact? This whole session today is about these two pillars. Let me also write two more things, Tanvi. CSR is shareholder money and government spending is taxpayer money. We should know the difference between the two. If I am having a district collector working in a district, let's say Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu, and the district collector is implementing a scheme of, scheme of Samagra Shiksha of NEP 2020 National Education Policy. The government program that the, that the DC, the district collector is implementing, is that money taxpayer money or is that money shareholder money? It is taxpayer money, the taxes that you and I are paid. CSR money is shareholder money. Tanvi, you will write CSR money is shareholder money. It is the dance. The dance of CSR is the dance and the collaboration and the tango between the two. I'm trying to make it as simple in nursery, nursery rhymes as possible for all of you. Are you now understanding this organizational rollout of parliament to corporate to, to MCA to corporate board to, to the CSR head and to you is all the structure by which this shareholder money has to flow to you. So what you get in CSR is shareholder money. Now, <clears throat> it is the same parliament with the Ministry of Finance, which is dealing with taxpayer money. Now, the money that goes from there to the district collector is taxpayer money in this district called Coimbatore. Now, in the district called Coimbatore, if the taxpayer money program is not giving results, which is impact with outcomes. The law now says that the CSR, the shareholder money can come in and an NGO like yours can be the medium, can be the conduit. And I will show you a video now and where the video will capture a program that I am doing with Indian Army in Kashmir. It's an eight minute video. I want all of you to see the video to understand how CSR stakeholders are engaged. You can write down Tanvi another word, stakeholder engagement. What are, who are the various stakeholders? And in this video, you will find that there is an Indian army which represents government. So the first stakeholder is government. Number one, you can write Tanvi. Number two, there is a funder. There is an ONGC over there, which is funding. And then there is an NGO, which is our NGO called Richa. Now the NGO is big creating a, share, a stakeholder management and a model of intervention. You can write the word model of intervention where the NGO brings everybody together. And within that model of intervention, there is a Chinar Yuva, Chinar Naujawan Club, a training center where the youth from the community are coming and getting trained in skill development. Many of you are doing skill development, I am aware. And this example will show that how almost 10 years ago, when Baramulla, Kupwara were the hotbeds of militancy in India and CSR had just come in, the Indian Army had approached me and I had taken my NGO there and then basis my NGO's work, we got the army welcoming us, we got the corporate funder, we started hiring staff from the local community and we got the youth to come into the training center. And you will see the miracle that happened. This video will talk about that miracle. It is this miracle that is the impact and outcome of CSR. And if I, if I as an NGO are able to give this impact with compliance, which is the second pillar, then the game is on. 
anywhere in any part of the country if you any one of you wants to do csr if you understand this particular video and what i am already telling you before the video so that you know what you are seeing and you know what you are hearing you will find the army campus now the army campus is what government money it is taxpayer money ongc money coming to the ngo is what csr money shareholder money ngo engaging in the campus and getting the youth and training them is the model of intervention this model of intervention then actually generates an outcome which outcome you will see in the video if you are able to give that confidence to your donor and if you can present this as a proposal and show to your donor that i am that ngo and i can create this dynamics slash miracle as impact for you then i am the partner that maybe you are looking for interestingly what has happened is the funder since the amendment of 2021 you can write down tanvi again csr spending has now become mandatory from january 2021 so the funder has to spend the money by 31st march today we are on 23rd march in the next 7 days yesterday i was on a call with a funder who said my ngo is telling me and calling me i cannot spend it by 30th sir what should i do i said you terminate the contract and you ask them ask your board that i want to do direct implementation this is a capex i have to spend they have to spend about some 30 lakh rupees i said you spend that 30 lakhs in the next 7 days place the work order try to see if the deliverables can be achieved by 31st because the ca will not give you the utilization certificate there is a lot of pressure and i will show you penalties you can write on tanvi there are penalties on the corporate if they are not able to spend the money so if you as an ngo understand this whole dance of csr this engagement of csr then and if you are doing good work which your video is showing then there is no reason why lots of csr fund out of this 25000 crores cannot flow to you that is the whole that is the whole narrative that i will try and present over here it is not a rosy picture it is not a non rosy picture also it is entirely up to you to leverage the law and receive the resources to make the change on the ground so i will now uh, show you a video now so far again i'll take a quick feedback from everybody tell me a yes or a no are you all now understanding the organizational structure the the taxpayer concept the shareholder concept the engagement between the two that how you what where do you lie if you lie in this maze then you have to do this to get the conversion and what that conversion could look like we will see in the video so this is this is this is good if you're understanding this and if you're getting a sense of uh, uh and while you are saying a yes or a no or whatever if there is any counterpoint any 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 point that you think uh needs my response again i would request tanvi uh to keep jotting down those points because the the scrolling will keep going i don't want to spend much time on <clears throat> looking at that but every 10 15 minutes we can halt and then we can take some questions also tanvi are you up for it will you be able to do it Yes. Sir. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you're there, and I just you just chance to be there, so it is hel helping me a lot. So I will, Shinu. I can uh, do a screen share, and I can show my video. Is that possible? Yes, sir. Yes, it's uh, it's possible. Yeah. You can okay. Share the video. okay. 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 Share sound. Optimize for video clip. And this is what I am doing. Is my screen visible? Somebody. Yeah, can it's, see? it's yes. Yes. We can see. And if you can hear the voice, then please tell me yes, you know. Images on Kashmir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Its blaze, dispelling darkness. Its presence, radiating optimism. Its rhythm, spurring people to their feet. For the youth of Kashmir. This is a new sunrise. An awakening of new dreams and ambitions. The dawn of a new life. For young Zubair and Danish, any day is a good day for business. This confidence matches their selling skills gained from a professional course they both completed. To their eager eyes, 
the Baramula market is a good place to find new customers. KL University. Aspire to level up your career? Explore our management, humanity. On a different street, but with a similar zest for life, is 23-year-old Tabastam. Each new design by this talented fashion designer brings her nearer to her dream of becoming a boutique owner someday. Pehle maine seekha hai naujawan ka love se, aur fir mujhe confident hai ki main kuch na kuch karu. Main yahan pe alag-alag dresses banati hu. Main chahti hu ki mera bhi acha sa boutique ho aur main apne boutique pe kaam kar saku. While the Bassam takes confident strides towards her career goal. Elsewhere, 22-year-old Hansel has already arrived. Hansel is back from Gurugram, where he outperformed fellow staff at KFC. Rose rapidly up the ranks, Hansel is here to take charge as manager at the Srinagar outlet of the multinational food brand. पहले जब उठता था मुझे सुबह मजदूरी जाना पड़ता था। जो नए नए लड़के आते हैं, मैं आज उनको सिखाता हूँ ये करना है वो करना है। पहले मैं सीखता था, आज मैं सिखाता हूँ। even beyond the mountains of Kashmir, young Kashmiris, empowered with new vocational skills, are pursuing new careers. For these young men and women, life is on a positive trajectory unlike before. Their success is also the success of the Indian Army, which has scripted the silent revolution. The Indian Army continues to advance in this mission of bringing peace in the valley with initiatives aimed at integrating Kashmir's youth into the mainstream. Powering these initiatives every step of the way is India's leading oil and gas exploration and production company, ONGC. Operational support is provided by Recha, a non-government organization engaged for implementing the program. The most far-reaching part of this program is the Chinar Nojavan Club, a training center established in 2016 in Baramulla district. The center selects deserving young candidates from economically weaker sections of society and gives them suitable vocational training followed by jobs. Here, security, nature, environment is very good. If we go to the tuition center, we have to do a lot. We have to do nothing here and we have to learn something else. Job-oriented skills training with courses in fashion designing, hospitality, retail and arts and culture, followed by placements. Between April 2016 and February 2022, Janar Nojavan has successfully trained 424 boys and 376 girls in retail, 667 boys and 141 girls in hospitality trades. 423 girls in fashion designing, 86 boys and 44 girls in arts and culture in music courses. A total of 2,191 aspirants. Chinar Naujwan Club has uh, changed the uh, scenario of Baramula as well as the mindsets of youth. Right now we are having number of students and our all batches are fully subscribed. Besides helping youngsters in shaping their destinies, the Indian Army and ONGC have also been winning the trust and goodwill of Uri residents. Houses that were destroyed or partially damaged during the September 2017 encounter with militants were rebuilt in less than three months with help from ONGC. Whether it's repairing broken houses or healing broken souls, ONGC's CSR team welcomes every opportunity to serve. The Indian Army and ONGC expanded the scope of the program by adding more initiatives along the way. The Drug de Addiction Center was a key addition. We are not working on drug addiction, we are also mental disorder. When the coronavirus was at that time, the center was closed, but ONGC has been so much supported that we can sit at home with children or with such people who have depression, anxiety, stress, and they can help them to 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 help them. Misguided and jobless Kashmiri youths, once addicted to drugs, become easy prey for militants. 
rescuing them is therefore imperative from the national security point of view. The Drug de Addiction Center has so far rescued 3,050 youths from the stranglehold of drug addiction and successfully rehabilitated them. I was in school, and I was also addicted to some bad people. I was here for a year, and they changed me completely. And I left the drugs finally. The respect I had left, I got it back. That's the biggest thing. In so many ways, the Chinar Nojavan Center has been a savior for so many. Other initiatives, like setting up four porter cabins, and five self-help groups have helped to optimize the program's outreach. With more and more youths back on the right path, life in Kashmir is slowly returning to its natural rhythm. And when there is rhythm, can music be far behind? The Art and Culture section at Chinar Norjavan Club provides training in instrumental and vocal music with experts to teach and assess the aspirants' progress. <laughs> Talented youths are encouraged to participate in competitions and perform professionally at festivals, events, etc. Their success has inspired and emboldened even conservative families into sending their youths to learn music at Chinar Norjavan Center. A welcome change of outlook. I was very shocked about singing, that's why I took admission in music. We also have to learn about the learning here. There are many events that I have done here. We also have to thank the ONGC and the Indian Army, which has given us this platform. Thank you for joining us. These are undeniable signs of a community healing. Yes, these are undeniable signs of a community healing. Now there is music and laughter. Now there is empowerment and opportunity. Now Kashmiri youths can say with confidence. हम हैं वो रोशनी जो बनाए आपका भविष्य और बुजुर्ग हम हैं okay so i hope you got a sense of one second let me just let me just end my video so that i can focus back on my session okay so very quick responses from everybody once again how many of you understood who all were the different players in this game you didn't see the indian army because you know this was a civilian video but the entire campus is an army campus. It's within the 19 artillery brigade where they have created this engagement model with the rich NGO and the donor ONGC. Could you all understand? And again, give me your chat responses. Could you understand that how in this campus run by taxpayer money of Operation Sadbhavna of the Indian Army, that the taxes that you and I pay? We are also contributing to this project. Each one of you is contributing to this project also because we are you are, you are a responsible taxpayer. Now, within this campus, there are buildings, there are rooms, there is infrastructure. All of that is what the government is providing slash Indian Army. But here, there is an NGO which comes in and which says that I'm going to get a funder. So when I go to the funder, I'm telling the funder that there is a need assessment. So Tanvi will write down the phrase need assessment. And she's aware now, and all of you are aware of this. And keep, keep sharing your feedbacks on the chat and keep asking your queries also. I will slowly, slowly help you to understand the core concept of CSR. If I make you understand the core concepts, it's like teaching children 2 plus 2 is 4. And then you can do your own coding and you can do your own you know, logarithms and whatever exponentials subsequently. Now, this NGO, when, when I say this NGO, I mean each one of you, because you are all part of an NGO. You have to figure out the requirement. Now, here the requirement was militancy. Kashmir, last 60, 70 years, militancy. Baramullah, hotbed of militancy, 2016. You might have heard of a militant called Burhanwani, who was killed in June and July 2016. 
Then there was abrogation of Article 370 in August 2019. So we were there in 2016 from February onwards. And when RB showed me this campus, they had approached me and they said, Ki, it seems that there is a CSR law. We said, yes, there is. And we would like to understand your requirement. Now, this is the requirement that the NGO figures out and then goes to various funders. We went to many funders. One of them was ONGC. And they said that, yes, we would we would love to partner the Indian Army, even though this, this is beyond the geography of our operations. You will write this word also, Tanvi. Preferably in your local area, the law says, but ONGC is not working in Kashmir, but it is now spending so much of funds in Kashmir because they say that the entire geography is my area of India is my area. Why is just my factory my area? The whole country is my area. This is called corporate citizenship. This is called gentlemanly behavior. This is called behavior that conveys a higher sense of giving back by the board of the company. Remember, this is shareholder money which is coming in. So who owns the who, who manages, who's the trustee of the shareholder money? And you can write down this phrase, Tanvi, again on the chat box. The trustee of the shareholder money is the board, the CSR committee of the board, the board of the company. And when we read a little bit about the law, we will see the role of the CSR committee, which is part of the board. And I will show you some case studies where in, in HCL Tech, I'm, I'm engaging very closely with the Shivnadar group. Many of you must be engaging with the HCL Tech ecosystem in some way or the other. I have been engaging with ONGC uh, uh, on various fronts. I'm just taking two cases where I'm, I have that myself been involved through the works that I do with, with Richa and, and, and Lakshya, uh, our, our consulting firm, to give you a sense that it is these trustees or at the board of the shareholder money who then give permission to an NGO like yours to then create something like the Chinar Naujawan Club. <clears throat> So tell me one thing, if you as an NGO, if you as an NGO are able to understand all of these little, little elements that I've been mentioning so far, do you think it will help you a little bit more in your proposal writing when you are seeking CSR funds? Tell me a yes or a no on the chat box. If you're able to visualize this, what you just saw in the video. If you're able to visualize how your project will look like and then you start writing the proposal and when you're visualizing while visualizing and during and before visualizing, if you know that there is a law under which the shareholder money can come to me, do you think that will help you to prepare a better proposal? <clears throat> yes, absolutely. And when in the beginning I asked you the question, most of you said no you don't know section 135. So, till you understand that section 135, it will always be a challenge to prepare a, a funding worthy proposal. Now, I will spend maybe 2-3 minutes on asking you some questions and maybe some of you can also, you know, I can see some of you on the videos, some of you to speak a couple of lines on what did you see in the video. Can I ask some of you to speak, maybe Anthony, Glenn Gomez. Anthony, I can see you on the video. Yes. Where are you logging in from, Anthony? Uh, sir, I'm working at the CD office, Jardis. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm an assistant you... manager here. Brilliant. So, Anthony, just two lines on what what is what did you see? What is your perception of what you saw in the video? Uh, like there were very various social interventions that was covered in the video. And I, I saw like how each social interventions were combined with each other and the final output was a sum collective of all these social interventions and it was clear how everything was connected within each other to have that collective output very good could you could you see a sense of hope and aspiration and happiness in the youth exactly because when i, when I go when i go to a classroom if i find children cheerful and laughing and excited do you think that those children are ready to learn or they are very bored? Exactly, sir. Because, you know, we, uh, throughout the video, initially they were showing a way, a light, a way, how they can go. Maybe throughout their, uh, like, um, like kid, when they were a kid or a youth, they would have gone through a lot of traumas. Hmm. But how that support was there. It was also mentioning about how mentally they were supporting, plus 
how the uh, career guidance and all those did guidance you, did you there. did you did you see the boy in the beginning he said pehle main seekhta tha ab main sikhata hu so that boy yes, said the kfc boy that earlier i was learning and today i am an instructor do you think this is giving that boy in the kashmiri community a, a lift in the community as a, as as a, a, in terms of respect does It's that right. boy have a greater sense of confidence and self respect where he was earlier a student and now he is a trainer yes sir yeah will will other younger people be looking up to him exactly sir like is along he, with he... respect he he was exactly. being a leader now this same boy 5 years ago not the same this particular boy the this boy kind of boys were picking up stones and picking up ak47s now now they are picking up the pen they are picking up the computer and the laptop and they are saying did you see the girl in the end yahan seekhti bhi hu aur earn learning and earning she said hmm. so when they are learning they are earning there is some increase in their bank incomes in the family income these girls would be in burkhas outside they are outside openly playing badminton can you see women flowering over there can you see women engaging over there yes so, sir and then you saw them play music yeah so they were playing music in the guitar and the sarangi and they were singing in fact you know we have we did our foundational birthday cake also of the organization there and they they sang the national anthem they spoke spoke very patriotically so somewhere that community is beginning to see a ray of hope long way off but today if you go to kashmir hundreds and thousands of tourists are coming to kashmir and imagine i'm saying the bigger thing now again if there was so much of army and so much of policing 10 years ago 8 years ago who was spending on the army the tax payer money or the csr money tell me anthony or tax payer money tax payers money tax payers money yes father the army is going to be managed by tax payer money but now 10 years later if some csr 2% comes in and there is happiness and hope and more students are coming in into the campus to learn through this little amount of csr money so tanvi you will write down csr money is like a catalyst so the project that you prepare has to be a catalytic process it is it should be catalytic little money huge impact little little drop creating an ocean so this campus is all tax payer money but what we got from ongc was funding for for fashion designing for retail and hospitality training for music for drug de addiction and for computer programming and coding now all of this is csr money so csr is like bringing in the software and the government was providing the hardware of the campus the software of the life in the campus was provided by csr little 2% very little money was spent through through csr but the impact became massive because this 2% is planned in a very meticulous manner every project every activity gantt chart what is going to be achieved quarter 1 quarter 2 quarter 3 quarter 4 how much money will be spent who will be spending so this 2% brought in staff trained the staff content curriculum nsdc certification counseling and guidance job fairs market linkages placements alumni connects then uh, for women they help create self help groups you saw that girl in the beginning by the name of tabassum her embroidery you could see she is setting up a boutique now this boutique she becomes an entrepreneur if she becomes an entrepreneur she will give jobs to more people so this whole uh, visualization and i would like people to now write on the chat box again because many of you are not comfortable it seems on speaking just write down your two lines everybody who is there participating in this session just two lines i want you to write about what two words two lines on what you could see in this video anthony mentioned something let me see from all of you and link it up to what i have been speaking to you the law the tax payer money the shareholder money just just mention we we will answer that question and care where can csr be be you know tanvi just keep noting wherever hope and confidence in their face yes george raja i can see that 
building bridge between agency local and people very good life is changing for the better hopelessness to greater hope happiness of the youth catalyst and visualization hope joy impact of spending service orientation absolutely confidence in leadership building hope in life hope for the bright future an intervention of change transformation in youth bringing them to mainstreams okay very nice very nice keep writing joy hope and impact change the life for the better uh, also keep writing about uh, uh, how the youth are getting mainstreamed uh, is the face of the army coming across as a caring army and not an occupation army maybe the army is initiating this so the people are looking at it as a positive way they are beginning to question a lot of things that you saw those houses in uri some houses were reconstructed over there when they were had to be pulled down because militants went and hid inside those houses so all of this is conveying a sense that csr can be transformative yes can you all say yes on that can csr be transformative yes or no i'm seeing yes 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 now all of you are doing good work and if you can create transformative models of intervention then many corporates may want to partner you let me give this to you in writing if csr fundraising is a challenge today then maybe maybe you have not understood this entire dynamics which i am trying to share with you and i'm going very brief and i'm being very precise that if you understand this dynamics uh you then know what this fund will do and what is the visualization behind this fund so some sub subsequently later on as the trainings proceed i will tell you proposal writing i will tell you accounting audit and taxation i will tell you a lot about how you should read the mind of the donor if you can read the mind of the donor then the game becomes very very different so i will now uh, you know stop for a minute and now start my presentation as well it is 11:20 we will have a small tea break at 11:35 for 5 10 minutes but before that i will show you a few websites of companies to show you how the disclosure is happening and how if you do some research so can we you can again write down the word research you need to do research and see what organizations are doing and then to understand that if this is the requirement in the market and this is where i am so this should be my approach to prepare a proposal proposal writing is the most important thing and this research will be very helpful and i will take you and show you some kind of research as to how it is to be done this is my web page i let's go to o o n g c okay is my screen visible tanvi can you say yes sir yes sir i go to the ongc website and i go to about us board level csr committee now can you see can you see this bullet number 2 what is it mentioning yes sir chinu what, yeah. what is it corporate, saying chinu corporate social responsibility committee absolutely now if you all see five members in the committee are there and if you see bullet number 1 2 and 3 are all independent directors so write down the word corporate governance is visible over here in csr of ongc because three out of five directors are independent directors now who is an independent director an independent director is somebody who is not taking any money from the company no it's a non pecuniary post hcl tech csr i will show you of hcl tech also now i just show you two examples if you see corporate social csr committee let's see their committee shinu once again can you read the committee members and how many of them are independent members over here shinu there are three committee members one uh, two independent members are there absolutely yeah. so two out of three again majority are independent so does ongc committee and csr committee of hcl tech two big giants in the in, in in the industry does it convey to you that these companies are looking at governance 
a lot. So another key point that Tanvi, you will write in the box is governance. What is your governance? What is your board structure as an NGO? Who are your board members? What is their background? Uh, what is their credibility? Because the funder is going to see your board, 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 board structure first. And if their board members reading their names gives them some confidence, like when I'm reading the board members of this company, now if you see Roshni Nadar, you should also do some research on these people. Now, who's Roshni Nader? She's the daughter of Shiv Nader and she's an environmentalist also. A lot of funding that HCL does now is moving towards environmental conservation also. She runs her own Habitats Trust as well, which is on, on conserving, you know, on the, the flora and the fauna. So some this is all part of the research. So when you are doing this, you must read the board members. You must also see that there is a CSR policy that every company has. The law was required every company. And I was one of the team members who helped create this CSR policy. If you see the CSR policy, sorry, I think it has to be downloaded, I guess. Let me download it and I can read this. Can you can you see it, Shino? Sorry, right, sir. Can see. I can see. If you see the dates over here, the first policy version was released on 15th April 2014. The law started two weeks before that. Very, very prompt board. The second version 1.1 was released in 21 to 23 April. And the amendment was in January 2021. And this was COVID wave two time. Can you see how quickly this board is moving towards creating their policy? You have to now also, I'm going to ask you a question. I will stop share over here. Say a yes or a no on your tab box. How many of you have read the backgrounds of the board members of the companies where from where you are seeking CSR funds? Tell me a yes or a no on the box. How many of you have read about the background of the board members when you have written a CSR proposal? On the, on the chat box, I want to see. Keep writing. I can see. Mostly no. Yes, I can see. No, 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 no. Tell me one thing. If you are a boy, Sikandar Kumar, which you are, and you want to go and marry a girl, would you like to meet the girl before marriage or not? Sikandar, I can see you on the video. <laughs> or if you have a son or a daughter who is going to get married, would you like them to meet up once or not and, and see their background because you have to spend your life with that person? So CSR is an, and marriage is a partnership. CSR is a partnership. Mm -hmm. So I should know the people who are the trustees of my shareholder of the shareholder money, which is 2%. And I, but I'm saying, no, no, I want your money, but I don't want to know who you are. So, mm -hmm. so it is very, very important. Uh, I think uh, I think request all to please mute yourself. So, can we see that there is some importance to understand the board members? Okay, my second question to all of you. How many of you have read the CSR policy of the company that you are writing a proposal to? Again, write a yes or a no. I'm asking you the next question. Have you read the CSR policy of the company? Very honestly, write down. Right? If you're honest, then you, are, you have taken the first step to fundraising. I can see majority is a no again. Tanvi, you're my student. Yes. What What would you like to say when I'm see, seeing these no's? What does this convey? They should understand the importance of reading the CSR policy. Yes. Why yes. It's a... Yes, because the policy tells you where the money will go. So I need to know who will give me the money and I need to know who, how will, how that person will give me the money because this policy will decide. Then this policy will tell you which are the priority areas. So we have not done this. Another thing, again, I'm going back to the HCL tech CSR, this, this, this section. Uh, how many of you have read the impact assessment reports which are uploaded on the website of your potential funders? This is impact assessment of a project which is done by TTC Consulting. This is Aflatoon Bank. 
of Aflatun Social and Financial Education Program HCL grant. HCL grant is the biggest grant which is there from HCL. So this whole impact assessment report is there. Very technical report. You will see how the money came, how the money was spent, what were the outcomes. So tell me how many of you have read impact assessment reports of projects being done by your potential funders? Tell me a yes or a no. I'm already seeing no's over here. Okay, another question I'm asking you. Now, all wherever you are saying a no, Tanvi, please make a note. All of those areas where this research has to be done. You have to do research of this before you prepare the project proposal. How many of you have read the annual CSR report of your potential funders? Again, tell me a yes or a no. Again, it is majority. Only one person I could see a yes. It is a no. Okay. How many of you have written a CSR proposal? Tell me a yes or a no. How many of you have been writing CSR proposals? Yes, there is one yes. Yes, couple of yeses are there. So there are a few who are writing CSR proposals and maybe everybody doesn't know how to write the proposal. Tell me all of you, would you like to know how to write a CSR proposal that can embed all of this research? Tell me a yes or a no. I hope it's a yes if you want money. It will be yes. It will be a 100% yes, I'm sure. So... This is very, very clear. I'm doing a very live training need assessment over here. And this is like a reality show as well. That if we want to get CSR funding, we must know how to write a CSR proposal. And that CSR proposal has some very critical components. In fact, we are at 11.30, another five minutes, we will just have conversations. And after 10 minutes break, we will start the core concepts of the CSR law and the rules I will teach you over the next half an hour, 45 minutes after the tea break. Any thoughts so far? Uh, uh, what is this? What is the understanding that seems to be coming across so far? I have started showing you some websites also of companies. In fact, if you go to this website again, and I will again take you. If I take you here, if you see details of the projects, 23-24, now, if you see this, it tells you where they are spending the money. Okay. Well, can, uh, sir, can you a little bit just zoom it? Because so, yeah. so uh, Shinu, are you saying something? I'm saying that can you zoom it more, like little I, bit more. I've zoom, I've zoomed it a bit. Is it is it visible more? Right now, it's visible. Yeah. Yep. So you can see where all of this is kind of going health community health project strengthening of health and wellness mobile health clinic child nutrition adolescent health strengthening of community it is with schedule seven we will talk about all of that local area yes uttar pradesh is the location hardoi project duration so we need to see if i do suppose let me do kotak mahindra Kotak Mahindra Bank, Kotak Mahindra Bank, Kotak. Let's see, Kotak Mahindra CSR. If you go to CSR, so you should see who all are the directors and the committee members, policies and reports. If you go come here, it will show you this is their preamble, this is the policy, the vision, and the mission, etc. Where all will they spend the money? How will they monitor it? So, for example, if I am submitting a proposal to Kotak Mahindra and I read that this is how they monitor their projects. Suppose I read this, right? Monitoring. And I am writing the proposal where I will tell my monitoring approach and I am writing it to Kotak Bank. If in my approach to the in the proposal, I take something from the way they monitor and I and I write that also and embed it into my proposal. Do you think, and again, write me a yes or a no. Do you think my proposal will convey a bit of homework has been done by the NGO when they are submitting the proposal and I am the Kotak Mahindra CSR manager reading the proposal? I want to see a yes or a no. 
absolutely absolutely they will feel that you are doing your homework so that is what csr training and preparedness is all about and remember once the funds are raised and you get the money the real game begins after that how will you allocate the money how will you allocate the budget how will it be spent on the ground how will you ensure that in a timely manner things are happening okay so we will now i have used the first maybe almost 45 minutes giving you the foundational learning and again i'll do a quick poll over here on the chat box from the what we discussed in the last 45 minutes are you knowing about csr a little bit more than what you knew at 10:30 today in the morning are you knowing a little bit more i'm saying a little bit more in inverted commas i don't want to set very high expectations okay also now are you able to visualize what a project outcome should look like are you able to visualize very nice very nice this is good 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 because now that you are able to visualize i can go to the legal parts later on a little later now in the next part of it do you think do you think it is if some effort is made you can understand this this is not rocket science do you think that if i structure my session or if i if we structure the the learning going forward uh today and tomorrow and whatever you can actually do a better job in csr fundraising do you think it is doable in terms of fundraising do you see that it can give you some confidence to raise funds because this topic is about fundraising also now we are talking about and i am telling you why are you saying this yes because you are doing good work on the ground and whatever you've learned in the last 45 minutes is the first pillar compliance and the second pillar impact you are already doing but by doing impact and not knowing compliance maybe you were not having the confidence of writing the correct proposal okay so uh, i think we will this is good this is very very useful for me uh, i have understood the baseline of this of my audience and uh, the next one hour that we will have from i think 11:45 to 12:45 uh, and then we will have question answers also on the way i will tell you about the law so i have what i have done is let me just show you a small screen share because i don't want to confuse you people also too much i have created a folder for you where i've got these csr documents you know there are so many documents and if i open all of these documents they are i think already open here these are the schedule 7 this is the section 135 this is the schedule 7 this is the csr rule this is the faqs and when i tell you about faqs i will say control f if you type the word liberal you will go to a particular point you will understand what is liberal interpretation if i tell you about branding can you do branding for your donors or not i will show you how you can use a little bit of these very very key documents and these documents also i will share with you after the session is over uh, but please understand you cannot go from nursery to a phd in 2 hours okay so we have to set the expectations right also what i will do is to give you the lay of the land yes we will do i think uh, to help us to, you to write proposals yes absolutely nancy that's the whole idea once we do this session today we will try and have a longer association with you and we will get into those conversations with with with, with father and the team in delhi the idea is that by going through this session you should understand as to what is required to be known number 1 my session's objective is that you understand what is required to be known you understand what csr is all about and you also have a clear understanding that yes i want to learn about it i can't just force it you should feel that i want to learn it like just like those students in chinar they are happy they want to learn they want to grow pehle seekhta tha ab sikhata hu so that sense has to come across my audience which is you over here yes we will do that and we will take it up from there so she know i think we can just take a 10 to 15 minute break and then be back uh, in the next 15 minutes will that be okay it's yes, sir 
It's okay. Any 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 thoughts from anybody before we shut off for a bit of this break? I, I, Shinu, so... I, uh, Shinu, I hope it is going the right. Uh, we are going the right way and not. The... <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I hope like people, I, I, right schedule. I hope the audience because I've tried to make it as simple as possible so that they get a very clear picture and the, and the audience should not get scared. You should get feedback from them because we yeah. have. Good, good. So I'm getting some thumbs up, so which is nice and. Uh, uh, good, good, good. Please share your views also, and uh, it will give me, uh, get me, give me uh, some sense of uh, you know how the feedback is, and we will now go a little more technical in the next session. So thank you so much, and see you in ten fifteen minutes. I request all the participants should not leave. Keep. Uh, uh, you can just mute and shut your video. Do I see and... it and come? Yeah. <laughs> I request all the audience should not leave. Just stay there and uh, keep it mute. Then only you can come back and join. थोड़ा पानी लाइए थोड़ा पानी लाइए गर्म है
इधर ऑनलाइन मीटिंग चल ही रहा है उधर से और आता है तो हाँ बोले रे भैया We'll start our meeting by eleven uh, fifty. Sorry, is coming back.
We can start in the next two minutes, please. Eleven fifty, we'll get started again. Yes. Is my screen visible? <laughs> yes, sir. You are uh, you making a slideshow. Mm -hmm. I'm just running the slide. Just let me know, Shino, if it's okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, it's perfect now. Good, good, good. I request so I all do, of you. You know, what I'll do is, I have prepared some slides which capture the CSR rules and the law completely. Okay, sir. And the idea would be that once I do this, uh, uh, they will at least know the law and the core elements of the rules. Okay, sir. Which is which they should know up front. You know, you've been through the three months course yourself, so it is not shortcut. There is no shortcut in this. Okay, okay. But they will get a lay of the land. They have will yeah. understand. Tanvi, will that be okay? Tanvi, you also. We will yes, share all the yes. BPT. Yeah. There are some you people share the asking. PPT. You can share the PPT, and uh, I will recording. share the list of gazetted documents also. Yeah, yeah. the recording is already available in YouTube. Yeah, it's uh, live stream is going on. <coughs> good, good. Sir, we can start. You think people Should I start? Are... Yeah, yeah, almost okay, one good, good. <laughs> So, good morning, everybody. Uh, so we are back. And let me let me do a screen share on. But Joel, there was a course there. Are, we started, there was a course by HCL Foundation, so he was talking about that course, the three month course on CSR. Somebody was asking about which program. Ah, okay, so this is a brief about the law, and the law says that every company which has a net profit, net worth of 500 crores or more, turnover of 1000 crore or more, or a net profit of 5 crore or more, in any of the immediately preceding financial year, which you can see in red, they have to spend in every financial year at least 2% of the average net profits made in the immediately three preceding financial year. Now, the word, and keep a paper and pen in your hands, please. Uh, it is net profit. Net profit is found through section 198. This, these are the core elements of section 135 of the Companies Act. So this is the eligibility clause and this is the budget clause. And I'm not doing clause by clause here because that, that gazette notification uh, I will share with you and the, that has to be learned, you know, read through you know, one by one for a deeper understanding. But this gives you the complete picture. Now, once they qualify and they know the budget, what happens is a CSR committee of the board has to be formed. And therefore, we can say that as of 1st of April 2014, CSR has become a board level activity. Now, so this means that there is a board level CSR committee. It has to comprise of three or more directors with at least one independent director. We saw some examples of the HCL Tech Board and the ONGC Board, how they had more than 50% as independent directors. The composition to be disclosed, disclosed, which they are also disclosing, you can see. And this committee will formulate a CSR policy. You, you saw uh, one of the policies and clearly stating the budget activities. In fact, from April to uh, from, from January 2021 and from April 2021 onwards, an annual action plan has to be uploaded on the website of every company. And this committee, which is part of the board, has to monitor the rollout. See, there is no point in having a policy which cannot be rolled out. We have to roll it out also very, very clearly. Okay. Now, once the committee has done this responsibility of the board, 
is to, it must approve and disclose the policy in the annual director's report and in the company's website. They must ensure implementation. Number two, number three, they must report on the actual spending and utilization. Now, please make a note of this again. Actual spending and utilization is not mere transfer of money from the funder to the donor or to the NGO. It is for the NGO to spend the money for the activities that were agreed upon and then report it back to the donor along with the utilization certificate as to from the chartered accountant with the UDIN number, unique document identification number has to be there. And the director's report must specify in case there are any reasons for not spending. And there is a reporting format that I will show you. But as of January 2021, there is the money has to be spent. Now, whether you spend it or you give it to the government, if you want to spend it and you cannot complete the spending by 31st March, you have something called the ongoing project where you get another three years to spend the money. If you can't even allocate the money by 31st March, you have to give it to the government in six months time to any of the approved government funds. And those funds are actually these funds that you see bullet number five at the top bottom, PM Care, PM National Relief Fund, SCST Fund, Pachya Bharat Kosh, Clean Ganga Fund, etc. So this is very, very important to understand that what is the law, who's eligible, how much money they have to take out. And this all adds up to about 25,000 crores every year by about 25,000 companies. The board role becomes very critical. Within that, the CSR committee role becomes very, very critical. The committee reports to the board and every three months they are meeting. So every quarterly, you have to also, as an NGO, be aware that every quarter you should be ramping up your your compliances, even though per month you should have your internal reports, but this is very, very important. So these are the different uh, entities or kinds of entities who can get CSR money. One, two, three, four. One is a company vehicle, which is an NGO or a foundation. In fact, a foundation is an NGO. It can be new. It, this is called the activities route. But they must, it must have a 12A or 1023C income tax exemption and an ATG donor income tax exemption. And Form CSR1 they must fill out. Form CSR1 is very, very important. It is a form that registered a CSR implementing entity with the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. So this is company-owned NGO. The two where you lie is the external vehicle of the NGO. You should be at least three years old. This is called activities route. Activities route basically means that you should do projects and programs. Again, the requirement is the same in red. The central government, number three, or state government entities, like the IIC where I was, it is a state government entity. Now that, uh, it can be an IICA, for example. An IICA was the central government NGO, which was an 1860 society. And uh, uh a Goa CSR authority or a Gujarat CSR authority, all of those are supposed to be state government NGOs. They need to be only having form CSR1. If you see over here in box number three and four, the income tax exemptions are not mentioned. Now, this is because by definition, these government entities or the parliament or the state legislature entities are non-profit. So, so tax doesn't apply on them. And if you go to the number four, parliament or state legislature established entities, they can be new. The, the number three can also be new, like the number one. And this is again activities route. But form CSR1 is all required. Now, if you see one, two, three, and four, they are all having a common central box in dark brown. Each of these four types, one, two, three, four, can be a trust, a 1860 society, or a Section 8 company. Number five talks about the government fund where the money can go as contribution. And then there are other two areas where there is incubators and then R&D projects in STEM. And there are some qualifying organizations. This is to achieve STEM learning through for achieving SDG goals. Both five and six are called contributions route. Now, contributions route typically means that you can just give them as unrestricted grants. Whereas one, two, three, four are activities route. These are restricted grants. They have to be very structured. So your proposal will typically be under the bullet in the box number two, which is the external grants one. This is the list of activities. You have to see which all activities are permitted. 
and the csr that your entity can do all of these are permitted activities and uh, these are the broad initial first level the law and the schedule 7 i will come to the rules after this but at this point i will stop sharing for a little while and take my first lot of questions so shinu and tanvi maybe if you can help moderate this a little bit and if some more people can open their videos that will be nice uh have you understood the legal part of it that you have to be eligible and then there is a budget and then that budget has to be managed by a committee which reports to the board now this can go through activities route and contributions route for spending is this much clear to everybody yes or no again i need to see some responses is this much clear there are 151 people so i need more responses please yes natasha decosta what if you're a newly formed ngo then you have to wait for three years you cannot get funds if you are a new ngo you have to be three years old okay anybody else any 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 questions so far at this point there are questions that comes in in their mind uh, are they eligible to apply for csr yes so you can ask me do they have to ask me that question your eligibility depends on whether you are 1860 society a trust or a section 8 company and you have to be three years what is the process to be followed to obtain csr funding that's what have we've been discussing so far arjuna can schools and colleges be eligible if they are falling under those entities which i just mentioned uh, if you can in, in open your camera that will be really good you know because then my teaching becomes a little full of life if you are if you if you are on a call with a funder with your camera off please forget it nobody is going to give you money i think i will not give you money you can't hide behind the camera and ask for funds so the first principle is to be transparent and the first transparency is to show your face so i'm sorry to say but this is not just you 99% people i'm seeing on call they shut their cameras so i get a little annoyed at it because i am a teacher also and i teach i in my class also we are shinu and tanvi we keep pushing 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 but still people don't open their cameras so uh, you know <laughs> so you have to be very upfront about these things huh? so a few examples of activity versus contributions route yes uh, activity you know anything that you do as projects or activity contribution is like giving donation you take a check and you cut a check to the swachh bharat kosh you cut a check to pm cares no project then you don't even know where the money is going you know you can't monitor it so many corporates they don't want to do that they want to give money but they want to control it also they want to see where the money is going okay so that is a very very key key component so what i'll do now is and i'll ask both shinu and tanvi to volunteer on this to help me read this document so we will go law document clause by clause we will read it shino okay and tanvi you will also help me and i will ask other people to also volunteer and help me okay sir sir could you please share that screen uh, on ppt about eligibility so some are asking questions regarding okay that. okay whether they want to know the eligibility so you can take a screenshot if you want but we'll give you the presentation this you to this are the name point 1 point 2 point 3 and point 4 One, two, three, four are all. So you people are all in box number two, Shino. Top right. Yeah. And top right, you need to be a trust, a society, or a section eight company. But you have to be minimum three years old. Let me make it even better. Let me put this also in red. This has to be this. Okay. And this is minimum three years. Is this clear now? Yes, sir. if you are a school or a college which is a trust society or a company you can but remember you need to have a 12a or a uh, you have to have a 12a this is a very crucial one i hope your entities have this 12a and form csr one i hope you people are having 
Is it there with you people? Sir, few are having, few are not having. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, Tanji, so, can you please... Yes, yes, sir. There is one call, yeah. Some question? Yeah, yeah. A, a, a comment and a question. Prakash yes. Luis. I am Prakash Luis. Can I... Uh, Are you on the video? Uh, Nikhil, sir. Are you on the video? I can't see you. Yeah, yeah. I, I have put my video. I hope it is... It is... Uh, both is Prakash Luis. Here. Prakash Luis, sir. I have put it on. Maybe some problem with you. Go ahead, then I will try to. No, no, you, please, you ask your question, Prakash, because I am not able to see you for some yeah. reason, but doesn't matter. I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, can the, hear you. Uh, yeah, organizations like that, especially uh, the church related, hmm. these five, six issues that you mentioned are very crucial. And uh, in most of them, these are not there. Many will not speak. They all are, we are all very good listeners most of the time, but we will not speak. So, do the, number one, membership. If there are organizations with the governing body of seven membership, all of them will be male, all of them will be Christian, sometimes all of them from same institution. There won't be a single female, there won't be people from other religions. And sometimes it is very uh, uh, inclusive, uh, exclusive, not inclusive. And mm -hmm. I think that's because of that also we lose, even we are losing with our regular funder, donor agencies from abroad who are seeing these in the other organization, these are possible. In our organizations, we are uh, out of seven, even if you have two members who also have people with disability, people from other religion, the credibility of the board also, governing body also gets higher. You have said, you have hit the nail on the on the head. Uh, uh, they, they, so the most will not speak. Most That's why I kept quiet so far. And if these yeah. are not there, there is no point in talking about number one. Number two, disclosure is a huge issue among us. Yeah, because uh, there would be about uh, five or ten, even social work, small small social work centers which deal ten to fifteen lakhs per year, and uh, they are all under one parent body. Often time, either registered, not registered. So the parent body which does hundred and one thing, their finance cannot be exposed. Then even these organizations cannot. So disclosure is a huge issue. Mm -hmm. We can have many more trainings on this, but unless these are put in place, I'm sorry, Nikhil, why, but I think this is, I speak like Credibility Alliance, getting registered with Darpan, Credibility Alliance also remains a huge issue. Why should we, because disclosure is essential there. Membership so tell me, is, Mr. Prakash, Yeah. tell me, Mr. Prakash, then why can't this be done if you want to seek CSR? Yeah, yeah, uh, that, uh, those who are in authority will have to answer. She may be able to take this to the authorities who are going to because so if be, these I, are not so put I, in place, if these yes. are, you know it better. If these are not so put in place, then we can't you, go to CSR at all. It will we not can only function. keep talking and, and we, see, we are good people. We do a fantastic, extremely committed, no mismanagement, no misappropriation. But today, this whole, even social sector has changed a lot. Unless you keep these kind of uh parameters follow them put them in place any kind of even with the funding agency they are slowly moving out of us because those who have been 30 40 years because they know we don't fall in category the other one is parent body and smaller bodies Father, Father, we will, he is taking up all this in the session we will no 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 you later. know if this yeah. is not flagged off it will remain yeah, yeah. people will go back and i, I will conclude Shino. don't worry yeah. i will conclude yeah. fcra FCRA, because of FCRA, our ability to move into other sectors like CSR has been blocked. I am happy uh, whoever organized this. So then 12 and ATG, that is also an issue. So these, if we can, if uh, somewhere or the other, we have to understand if these are not in place, you know, we can organize many more, you know, but if yeah, these yeah. are not put in place, uh, other things will not. If we put this in place, and what Nikhil uh, is uh, extremely very well explaining, leading us, uh, inspiring us, we can get CSR without problem. Most of them in a CSR in the board are students of the church agencies. You see, uh, they would have an idea of it, but leaving even that aside, we will all be able to mobilize quite a bit of CSR funds. Sorry if I have moved from the main line or if you have taken longer time, kindly go ahead. Now I will uh, I will continue with the uh, listening to the session. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Prakash. You said you. You know, I think Father Sabasi wants to say something. Yeah, yeah. Now just to answer Prakash, we we at least here in, in the conference, 
development office, we are fully aware of it. That is mainly the reason why we are organizing this online session. Now, what is really needed for all of us, whether they are Jesuits or other organizations or congregations, the need to become aware of the professional way of handling any of these things. Professional by that I mean is all the compliances, rules, regulations, policies. That is what we want to promote. And this is organized precisely for that to create that awareness. Unless we are going to follow this, we will not get the funds. So I fully agree with you, Prakash, but then the that is what we are beginning to talk about. Now, once the people are aware of it, because our style of fundraising was uh, foreign-based. You write a letter, money comes, you write a report, everything is over. All those other compliances were not there in the past. Now they are also beginning to ask for the same details. Yeah, yeah. So therefore, I am telling all our participants here, you become aware of what is necessary for us today and the years to come. And that is where people like Nikhil and others will be able to help us. And that is the reason why we are organizing <laughs> this. We will have a follow-up afterwards with the understanding that unless we are able to function in a professional way, according to the compliances required, we will not collect any local fund. Small, small amount we may collect somewhere. The big funding will not be possible. And Father, uh, Father and uh, Mr. Prakash, let me just add in. Beautifully, I think both of you, you've, you've said very well. <clears throat> we will be more than happy to help you restructure your boards also because I work directly with the boards. And uh, I run, myself run an NGO. So these are very relevant things. And let me tell you, uh, if some of this is like, I, I'm also training the Don Bosco, the Salishians also. And I was in Hyderabad and before that in Kolkata and Guwahati, Mumbai, Chennai all of that. And this question kept on coming. And I said that, see, there is the Ram Krishna mission also, the Chinmay mission also. A lot of, you know, Christian organizations are also receiving CSR money. The composition of the board and the transparency and the governance are very key factors of due diligence today. And, uh, uh, you know, just recently we were approached by one of those big four, uh, you know, agencies, the, the big consultants for one of their clients. And they've asked us all the details and information about our board members. Just two days ago, we've received our FCRA. Finally, you know, we have three-year application. We got the FCRA two days ago, actually, for my own organization for the next five years. It took them three years to, and they're taking a lot of time. A lot of NGOs have also been rejected. So the fundraising game has, has kind of gravitated towards some key pillars where the role of the board, the credibility of the board, the transparency of the finances becomes very critical. In fact, let me just show you, and this is because this point has come in, uh, um, is my screen visible right now? No, not as yet. No? I will just show you what we have done for our own NGO website. So my own NGO is called Richa.org. Right. So I think there is some, you know, some security issue thing which they were clearing today, but I hope, yes, they have cleared it. If you go to About Us and I go down. So while we have the complete disclosure of the board members with their backgrounds and everything, we have organized, we have, this is a crucial thing. We have our last 15 years annual reports are uploaded. And all our FCRA reports are also uploaded. And this becomes, and if you see within the annual report, what we've also done uh, is to make sure that we disclose the finances. We've disclosed the finances. A lot of funders have written to us saying that you are one of the very few NGOs who are being so transparent. Please submit a proposal to us. The funder is coming to us, Father Sebastian, and uh, they feel confident. And what I'm trying to tell the Jesuits and all the other participants here is that because you're doing good work on the ground and there is genuineness about it, I think maybe this challenge is also an opportunity for all of us here to, to change and, re and, and, and reform ourselves in a way that we become, we become more suitable to these funders. Now, as I just told you about the law, CSR spending is now mandatory. And if you are there with all the compliances in place, then you will get the funds and they need big players like you. Many of the corporates that I'm in touch with, they think the pilot I want to do is minimum one crore rupee. Pilot is one crore rupee. You, they want to go in from five to 10 crores pro project, the, the, the bigger funders. And they want the capacity of NGOs to be in synchronization with 
So, Mr. Prakash, thank you for highlighting that. And I, I, in fact, as part of my session, I would have spoken more in detail a little later. The role of the board of the company as well as the NGO is very, very important. There is no denying about it. Let me also tell you the frequency of meeting of the board is very important and how you're documenting the minutes, etc. cetera. So keep doing that very strongly. Uh, uh, what should be the average budget for such funding? For what funding, uh, Mr. Fraser? Father Fraser. Father. No, that is for, for any type of project because okay, we yes. have small projects also. And yes, I was wondering if uh, everything has to be above a crore. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. It depends on the size of the donor also, Father. Okay. So suppose yeah. there are there may be a funder whose budget is 5 to 10 crores. They would be happy to give you 20 to 30, 35 lakhs also. Yeah. So And one more point, you know, uh, uh, I think what Father uh, Prakash said was right, that almost all our uh, boards are exclusively of Jesuits. Now, right. am I understanding you to say that that would be objectionable? Yes, it can because be. You know? Yes, All the Jesuits uh, are of, uh, you know, are credible people. Mm -hmm. They have had a, a, a credible record, right. but they would be only Jesuits. That you so think would be a problem. Father, let me tell you, Father, it does not make you non-eligible. As per legal of compliances of CSR, you remain eligible if everybody is a Jesuit priest also there. There is nothing wrong. But if I'm a funder, I may have a layer of concern. And if you add some diversity and have some women also there, some different community representations also there, then the confidence of the funder becomes higher because what is happening is, and they're also doing ESG reporting, mind you. ESG, you might have heard of ESG. Now, ESG reporting is asking you a lot of these board level questions on diversity and inclusion also. And that affects their business turnover. So somewhere, uh, whether we like it or not, but this is how it is moving. And therefore, I was telling the Don Bosco people also the same. And I think some of them have started thinking about, about the changes in the board also. And that doesn't mean that uh, you change your aims and objectives of, of serving the poor community and the needy community. Also remember, the beneficiaries in the needy community should not be religion specific. That will be a, that will be a, a disaster for fundraising. In CSR. Yes, that is never the case. That's never. Uh, I know that. I know that. So many funders, when they see, um, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a religious denomination, like for example, as I said, you know, Ram Krishna Mission is also there. Christian Chinmay Mission is also there. Many of them have applied to HCL Foundation, and I am I am an evaluator. There are a lot of Christian organizations which have which have submitted proposals uh, to HCL Foundation, and I am an evaluator. In fact, there is this this issue, the Christian ECS. It, uh, a glorious Christian Society of Nagaland, which won the, the HCL grant also, ECS. It's a very famous NGO in Nagaland. They got the HCL grant for five lakh, for five crores. It's a Christian name. It's a Christian organization. But they got the grant after heavy due diligence. So, but if you are able to increase the diversity in the board, then it tends, you will have, you will find more funders as being accepting of your proposal. Sir, somebody oh, is asking about MOU and all, MOU uh, and that, uh, yeah. Memorand of Understanding, MOA and all. Huh. So, your own MOA is the constitution of the NGO. Yeah. So, eventually what happens is, the Schedule 7 that I just shared with you, that is what the permitted activities are. So, basis the Schedule 7, again, Tanvi, you can write these things document down. One is Schedule 7, then the CSR policy, then your MOA, your constitution. And then your proposal. The sequence has to be this. Schedule 7 is part of the law. CSR policy is part of the company company's approach. So Schedule 7 matching to CSR policy matching, that will always be there because every policy has to match Schedule 7. So Schedule 7, CSR policy, then your MOA is very important. Now, you cannot be seeking funds Huh, so you want to do that in the in the Q&A session, Shinu? Huh? I think that's right because you know some conversation began, so I got a little diverted. So should I continue with the with the with the, with the yeah, teaching yeah. first? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. We are aware of this, and we'll try to work on this later. On. Okay, okay. So yeah. let's continue with that. So uh, Tanvi, can you just help me with this as I was just planning at that point? Uh, so we'll quickly go through the the various 
clauses. Can you read 135.1, please, for me? And we'll go a little fast because we've already covered these. So every, can see it. Oh, yeah. every company having net worth of rupees 500 crore or more, or turnover of rupees 1000 crore or more, or a net profit of rupees 5 crore or more during the immediately preceding financial year shall constitute a corporate social responsibility committee of the board consisting of three or more directors out of which at least one director shall be an independent director. So we saw that, you saw that in the presentation. Yes, this is just getting reinforced. So this is the law part of it and we made that into a, a figurative kind of a presentation there. Okay, then provided that in the green. Provided that where a company is not required to appoint an independent director under subsection 4 of section 149, it shall have in its corporate social responsibility committee two or more directors. So if you are not required to have an independent director, then it is not necessary that you should have an independent director is what they are saying. Then bullet number two. The board's report under subsection 3 of section 134 shall disclose the composition of the Corporate Social Responsibility Committee. So the, we uh, saw some of the compositions. Yes, that's part of that. Number three. The Corporate Social Responsibility Committee shall formulate and recommend to the board a Corporate Social Responsibility Policy, which shall indicate the activities to be undertaken by the company in areas or subject specified in Schedule, uh, schedule 7. We saw B, the schedule, yes. B, recommend the amount of expenditure to be incurred on the activities referred to in clause A. And okay. C, monitor the corporate social responsibility policy of the company from time to time. So in fact, if you see, uh, did we not see all of this over here? This is the, can you see the slide also? We saw this slide. You all remember yes, this, sir. family? Yes, yes. We just read the board thing also. So we, we can go back to that. Yes, continue. Now the board, number four. The board of every company referred to in subsection one shall A, after taking into account the recommendations made by the Corporate Social Responsibility Committee, approve, this, approve the Corporate Social Responsibility Policy for the company and disclose contents of such policy in its report and also place it on the company's website, if any, in such manner as may be prescribed. B, uh, ensure... Yes, sir. Yes, please carry on, carry on. B, ensure that the activities as are included in corporate social responsibility policy of the company are undertaken by the company. So from these first four clauses, so you can always make a note in your diaries. The first clause is the eligibility one. Second is about disclosure. Third is about the role of, of the committee. And the fourth is about the role of the board. Now the fifth is about the budget. Yes, please carry on. Uh, the board of every company referred to in subsection one shall ensure that the company spends in every financial year at least 2% of the average net profits of the company made during the three immediately preceding financial years or where the company has not completed the period of three financial years since it's an incorporation during such immediately preceding financial years in pursuance of its corporate social responsibility policy. Okay, stop so here I again. One second. This is again this particular slide. You remember this slide we did be sure? Yes, yes. It is this one. Okay. All right, then we go to the next one. Achha, if remember, this should be the average net profit of the three preceding financial year. But if the company has been formed only for two years, it will be X plus Y divided by 2% two, 2 of that. That is net profit, 2% of that. Provided that, please carry on. Provided that the company shall give preference to the local area and areas around it where it operates for spending the amount uh -huh. earmarked for corporate social responsibility activities. So now I will also share the CSR FAQ. Then if I do this FAQ and I do the word preferable. F-E preference. It says very clearly. 
local area. Now, if you read this, it very clearly says that this local area thing should not be a stumbling block. If you see the last paragraph, this one, it says that the thus the preference to the local area in that is only directory and not mandatory in nature, and companies need to balance local area preference with national priority. So reading these documents together, we are reading the law document, the Schedule 7 we, we are, is also there. So this has to be read along with the FAQs. The FAQs is what I have been, will, will share with you and she knew already you have a copy, but I will share all of the documents. This is August 2021 FAQ. We read the law along with the rules. These rules, we will try and cover how, as much as we can today have to be read together with the FAQs. And there is this Excel sheet that is a very favorite of mine. My students are aware of this. This this also we will discuss and this gives you the breakup of how the money is being spent by the corporate. So that you should know how the money comes and from where it comes. Okay. So yes, carry on. Uh, and we, go, we go to this one, provide it further. Provide it further that if the company fails to spend such amount, the board shall in its report made under clause Zero of clause one thirty four three o yes specify the reasons carry on specify the reasons of subsection three of section one thirty four specify the reasons for not spending the amount and unless the unspent amount relates to any ongoing project referred to in subsection six transfer such unspent amount to a fund specified in schedule seven within a period of six months of the expiry of the financial year. So this clause says that if my budget is 100 rupees and if as of 23rd of March today, I have spent only 80 rupees, but the remaining 20 is allocated to the Jesuit NGO and, but the NGO is not able to complete the spending. So this 20 rupees minus out of this 100, this 20 rupees, I will put into an unspent CSRA account, which is which one, which, which 135.6 will talk about this particular clause. And we will read after this. We will read this. And if this 20 is not allocated anywhere, then it has to be given to a government fund within six months. So the government is very clear. If 100 rupees has to be spent, it should be spent. Either you spend it completely within the financial year, or if it is not completed, we will give you three more years. Or if you can't allocate it, you will give it to the government. But the money will not lapse. And this can also not be put into corpus. Earlier corpus funding was allowed, but now corpus funding is not allowed. Okay. Now carry on with the next provision, provided also that. Provided also that if the company spends an amount in excess of the requirements provided under this subsection, such company may set off such excess amount against the requirement to spend under this subsection for such number of succeeding financial years and in such manner as may be prescribed. So there is a set off, you know, you are given three more years and this you will read in the rules uh, that if you spend out of 100 rupees, the company has spent 110 rupees. Then the 10 rupees extra that they have spent can be mi minus from their other three years of budget up to a period of three years. This, this 10 rupees can be set off. And the other one is provided also, last pair on this. Explanation for the purpose. provided. Uh, have you read this one? I say you've read the set off. Eh? Yes. Ah, yes. Explanation. Explanation for the purposes of this section, net profit shall not include such sums as may be prescribed and shall be calculated in accordance with the provisions of section 198. So section 198 is the one that net profit is to be calculated. Shinu, can you help me read now? I think she'll get a little tired. Any amount remaining unspent, Shinu? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Number six, number six, this one. This Any one. amount remaining unspent under subsection five pursuant to an ongoing project fulfilling such conditions as may be prescribed undertaken by a company in pursuance of its CSR policy shall be transferred by the company within a period of 30 days from the end of the financial year to a special account to be opened by the company in that behalf for that financial year in any scheduled bank to be collected to be called the unspent corporate special or corporate social responsibility account and such amount shall be spent by the company in pursuance of its obligation towards the corporate social responsibility policy within a period of three financial years from the date of such transfer failing which the company shall transfer the same to a fund specialized in 
schedule 7 within a period of 30 days from the date of completion of the third financial year so the bullet number 6 talks about ongoing projects you can write down ongoing projects bullet number 5 provision were talking about money which was available and it had to be it can then be put into the government fund as it says within 6 months so in case of an ongoing project what Shinu just read is a clause for ongoing projects. This particular clause is a clause for ongoing projects, this whole one. And it says that if my 20 rupees I'm not able to spend, but my NGO is already engaged, I should put this 20 into an unspent CSRA and I get three years to spend this 20 rupees. But this budget of 20 is part of SY, let's say this 23, 24. But they will get, you will get three more years to spend this 20 rupees. But spending you still have to do. But after three years, only 18 is spent and then 2 rupees is left. This 2 rupees should then be put into the, the, the fund specified in Schedule 7 within 30 days, it says. So what the government is trying to say, my dear friends, is that if you have your house in order, if you have your board compliances, if you have your transparency, your governance, your teams in place, your proposal writing done proper, then the law is today pushing and pushing and pushing the corporate to spend the money. I can tell you for sure that while it may sound that this is so easy to crack, it is challenging. But once you begin to create a credibility with the donors, the donors don't want to leave you also. They will talk about two, three years project, three, four years project, then they leave you. Like ONGC has left us now this year after eight years. They funded us for eight years. Every year they close the project. But now the auditor said that the same NGO we don't, we cannot continue. So we are now getting some other funders in the same project while NG, while ONGC will continue with some other NGO. We are fine with that. Eight years is a long, long time. So the credibility of the NGO with the donor becomes of immense value. Bullet number seven, you know. If a company is, if a company is in default in complying with the provisions of subsection five or subsection six, the company shall be liable to a penalty of twice, twice the amount required to be transferred by the company to the fund specialized in Schedule 7 or the unspent corporate social responsibility account as the case may be or 1 crore uh, rupees, whichever is less. And every officer of the company who is in default shall be liable to a penalty of one-tenth of the amount required to be transferred by the company to such fund, speci fund specified in Schedule 7 or the unspent corporate social responsibility account as the case may be, or 2 lakh rupees, whichever is less. Okay, so now if you don't follow bullet 5 and complete the spending or give it to the government or bullet 6 of going doing an ongoing project for 3 years, then bullet number 7 comes in and I will show you some of the penalties that have started coming in. If I show you these, if you see Comviva, so you don't want to become a case study of a penalty, you know, and I keep saying this in my CSR training that this is Comviva. It did not pass on the unspent money and there was some, some problem. And if you see the penalty order, this is the penalty order, Comviva. 5,50,122 into twice is 11 lakh or 1 crore, whichever is less. So the penalty in column D is 11 lakh, 00244. Mr. Manoranjan Mohapatra, if you see, it is one tenth of that penalty or two lakhs, whichever is less, so it is 55. If you add all, and if you see on the left side, this is under section 135.5. 135.5, because this is the budget on under which they, you know, 135.5 and 135.6, because these are not ongoing. And 135.5 talks about, 135.5 talks about this particular clause. Thank you very much. Sorry for the delay. No problem. Let's this is the one. One thirty-five five. Within six months, it should go to the government fund in Schedule Seven. They could not do this. So if you see eleven lakh and then fifty-five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, five, so about four lakhs. About fifteen lakhs is the penalty. If I add all of this from here, it all adds up to be about. 15 lakh, 16 lakh rupees. And the original penalty and the original amount to be deposited was only 5 lakh, this much. So three times they are paying penalty. So three times they are paying penalty. Now, if your NGO is there and you are able to approach this Conviva company at the right time, maybe this money can come to you. So do this is again part of research. Again, Tanvi, you're, you're mentioning research, research, research. 
research on company board members, research on company CSR policy, research on the, the annual action plan, research on the annual report, research on the penalties also. <laughs> that if this is what is happening, it means that the government is very serious about spending the money. Now, how we respond to it is our prerogative. And we have to figure out the right possible way. Okay. So, Shinu, can we carry on quickly with the remaining part? On number eight. Number eight. Yep. And then number eight and then number nine, we'll finish the law part there. The central government may give such general or specific uh, special directions to a company or class of companies as it considers necessary to ensure compliance or provisions of this section and such company or class of companies shall comply with such directions. Okay, where sometimes amount, we give some directions. And number nine. Where the amount to be spent by a company under section five doesn't exceed 50 lakh rupees, the requirement or subsection for constitution of the cor corporate social responsibility committee shall not be applicable and the functions of such committee provided under this section shall in case be discharged by the board of directors of such company. So it says that if your budget is less than 50 lakhs, then you may not require to form a CSR committee of the board and the board can do it. But if you have an ongoing project, the later amendment says that you still need to have a CSR committee. So now, this is this, you have this whole schedule 7, which I've already shown to you. These are the permitted activities. And if you see that you will be lying somewhere or the other in all of this. If you want to set up an NGO, then please make sure you do it with proper guidance. And uh, your CA should be aware about all of these implications. What are the activities required in it, etc., etc. So now, seven. Yes, yes, yes. Kino. Sir, I am saying in uh, Schedule Seven. These are the list of activities where we can apply. Because uh, yes, these are, are the permitted activities. These are the permitted activities under CSR. Now, I just told you those five points, Tanvi. First is Schedule Seven, and then your CSR policy of the company. They all normally cover all of this. So, if I look at the HCL Tech CSR policy, which I showed you, HCL Tech CSR policy includes all of this. HCL Tech CSR policy includes all of these elements. If you see, I am as I said, I was one of those who was part of the team that made this. If you see the areas covered, see, eradicating hunger poverty. So most of these companies, they tend to include the Schedule 7 under the permitted activity, promoting gender. See, it says number three is promoting gender. Number three is promoting gender. Number four is ensuring environmental sustainability. Number four is ensuring... So they just copy-paste also if you see the policies of companies. They do that. So what you need to make sure is that your constitution and MOA aligns with this. If it doesn't, then you may need to amend it. And if you amend it, then you have to also change your 12A, your ATG, and you have to get a new registration number. It's a bit of a, a, a tedious process. What I try and advise NGOs is that try to find overlapping. Like in my NGO, we don't have this because my NGO is 35 years old. But the word training is there. The word education is there. So I, in a board meeting, what I've done is I've passed a separate resolution saying that the word education in my MOA implies promoting education, including special education, blah, blah, blah. So that my board has given a go ahead in, in defining the meaning so that tomorrow if the CSR funder or the income tax guy asks me, I can say that my board has further explained. And when this constitution of my NGO was done, there was no law. So how would they know that in the year 2014, some schedule seven will come. So I try and avoid unnecessary. I also try and avoid unnecessary amendment of my, of my NGO constitution, because if you amend the constitution, it has bigger implications. It can go into income tax, rigmarole, and whatever. So good way is to try and extrapolate your existing MOA and align it with the Schedule 7. Are you getting what I'm saying, Shinu and everybody here? Yes, 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 sir. Yeah. This is again part of strategy and Lakshay will help you do this going forward. If you want to play this game, you have to do certain things smartly, including the, the rejig of the board. Also, I would say, uh, along with the board, if you're finding it very difficult to change the priests, etc. over there, create an advisory board. Create an advisory board, which is an advisor to the board. Then you can say to the donor that, my dear friend, these are the, the, the priests who are there and we are very, very clear and transparent. But look at my advisory board. And this board is always present in my board meeting. And in this board, have people from different sectors and different religions and different diversities. Do that also. If you're finding it more difficult to change your board, 
not doing that anything can actually reduce the number of potential funders is what i'm trying to say and then being very transparent again social media you know i, I you know i will take a separate class maybe you know once we once we go ahead on social media how are you promoting and tagging and hashtagging because 10 days ago i got a call from a uh, from a funder saying that i have to make some allocations my board meeting is in the first week of april and you are doing some it project mr pant and you are doing in this geography mr pant and i can see your website you have uploaded your latest annual report also your financials are there for the last 15 years your fcra reports are there and you are doing the work that i want can you quickly submit a proposal to me now do you think it is a happy situation this way or a sad situation it's a happy situation i mean i may still not get the money but at least it indicates to me that my ngo is in the right direction in in if 10 calls come maybe one will convert into a project at least i am doing the right thing so could you give some criteria that come you can select the proposal that will be helpful so the company has various criteria in fact you know let's halt over here for a little while because it's already 1240 now the rules are a long list actually and i will just do a screen share on this shinu and we'll have to think about this because we don't have that much of time csr rules is a huge list which what can be done is i can share the summary in my presentation of the key points and then you can share the docket of the rules will that be a good idea yes sir i'll share the presentation and all no no and the documents also yeah yeah okay. because you know we teach this in our course if you remember we do we take 4 hours to do this okay you know just 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 one of these so i don't think we can possibly do this in a very tight schedule but what i can do is that go back to my presentation and then take some questions also okay so there so is one you have to all one more presentation by mudit that also yes yes even that is there that is on on uh, uh that is on this one uh some data as to where yeah. the money is going if we will yeah. make it a 5 10 minutes one in the end yeah okay that is fine so now in june in in so there are these rules which were also framed i mean amendment in, in there was an amendment to the rules in 2021 where some of the key points have come across that csr spending is now mandatory there are finite time periods in you have to spend the money within 31st march or in an ongoing project for 3 more years or pass it to government for within 6 months then ngos are partners in implementation and compliance i told you the two pillars in the beginning you have to know implementation and impact and compliance and four and five are talking about the role the government is playing the government is getting more and more actively in, involved in mne monitoring and monitoring and also they want to participate and partner you so when you are developing project proposals try to see can you bring in government partnerships to the donor like we took the army partnership to ongc and they and they worked with us for 8 years that's a huge time long number long 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 period of time and during this 8 years while my partnership with ongc and army has gone from strength to strength i was able to raise more money showing this work showing that i am a credible organization and i am working with the army and i am working with ongc and they are the big players and see so i have two more funders there in kashmir now and as ongc is moving out both those funders are wanting to come and fill that space and give me more different projects and other two three other funders are also lining lining up then as an ngo you know these are the implications on the corporates so there was a high level committee which had made the recommendation for the amendments and it is now number to comply or explain you to see if our spending is mandatory board level accountability which is transparency monitoring approvals and reporting is absolutely critical spending now means allocation transfer of money utilization of money with clear ca certificate with udin number udin means unique documentation identification number has to be there ongoing project we've already discussed in 1355 it can be so 1356 which is one uh, which is uh, one plus three years Now the bullet number six is very important. Every company has to prepare an annual action plan, and the idea should be a good annual action plan is one which goes from April to March. So, like April twenty four to March twenty five will be a good one. The more you delay, the more you get into the ongoing situation, and getting into the ongoing is not a good idea. Try to start at April and end in March. Then you synchronize the grant to the financial year cycle. Now, admin overhead surplus set off. there is an excel sheet also which i will explain which is this one is very very relevant the role of number 8 becomes very important 
there are four key players the chief finance officer who decides the budget and who verifies the spending the head csr the chartered accountant and the company secretary all of these people i keep advising the corporate should meet every 3 months and likewise in your ngo the finance team the auditor and the program team should have a meeting once a quarter to make sure that if you've got 100 rupees and you have got four quarters to spend 25 25 25 25 then every quarter you do a samiksha a review out of this 25 in the time of 3 months have i achieved the targets if not then what should be my target for the next quarter and do your quarter wise quarter planning like a business does quarter wise quarter planning for its turnover and profit you have to work through your social engagement and your social return on investment on a quarter on quarter basis then capital assets uh, have to be handed over to ngos as per the new uh, compliances impact assessment is now mandatory you saw the hcl foundation impact assessment links for certain category of project which are more than a, a crore in in outlay and the corporate has a budget of 10 crore or more over the last 3 years and they must do impact assessment of project and then business and for profit activity should not be done in csr but as a by product or a corollary you can do brand building you can acknowledge the corporate and they can get brand building benefits and uh, it is very very important therefore that uh, the corporate leadership understands these very very key changes in the rules that have happened for the ngo in all of you who are here the role of the ngo leader is paramount number 2 you should know that you have time for 1 plus 3 year bullet number 2 number 3 12 8 10 23c etc are all have to be within your control form 10 bd you must fill for your donors uh this is for the previous year i have written so this will become be filed by 31st may 2024 it will be now and you must take form 10 be and give it to your donors form csr1 uh, is now mandatory and as i say point number 6 if you don't follow this then who moves my cheese will become the the situation so this is something which uh, you must all understand that if the budget of a corporate is 100 rupees and it is divided into a b c d and e and this is all that i'm saying from this slide onwards is all csr rules and i'm just not reading the pdf of the rules because it will go pretty pretty much long but shino will share the the gazette notification we read the gazette notification of the law the rules i will leave it to you to read but i'm giving you the crux of the key points over here if a b c d e all add up to 100 rupees of the funder then a is what it can keep for 5% for admin overheads and this admin overhead includes things like board level compliances csr policy strategy annual action plan so on and so forth mandatory csr reporting etc now the remaining b c d e will all add up to 95% and if you are doing csr impact report then it will be 2% here or 550 lakhs whichever is higher and the remaining 93 out of that 95 is for c d n e Now C is designing of CSR projects. It means need assessment, RSPs, and you when you are preparing your proposals, if you do need assessment, you can ask money under C. Again, use the word designing of CSR project. Why? Because this that I am showing you is from the rules. And if you go to the rules here, this Excel has actually come out of this. Uh, Yeah, I'm actually this. This is all from this particular paragraph, and it says, "But shall not include the expenses directly incurred for designing, implementation, and M&E." So, designing and admin overheads is outside this, which means general management and administration. So, what I've done is I've used this and I've used this. So, I've converted the rules into an Excel sheet so that it becomes easier for you to understand. <laughs> it includes theory of change model of intervention this is the c column c column green baseline end line if you you can build these as line items in your proposal d is the actual proposal is actual means the capex the running expenses all of that is part of d and this is what you do implementation and the the key slide for this implementation is all of this 
is all of this that you do to, to implement these activities. To implement these activities through your NGO, the money that you get comes from the D column. And this is this includes the activities route, the contribution route is given to uh, uh, to those entities which are mentioned over here. So the, uh, they are the PM care vertical, which is box number five, and the C is six is the qualifying incubator and research organization. And this is monitoring and evaluation, which means that you, if you put in the line item of MNE, you can get money from here also. So once you know this table under the rules, and when you are preparing the proposal and you are reading the CSR policy of the company and you know the jargons of the law, in the narrative of your proposal, and this again, I'm going to do a small question and answer over here. Do you think if I know all of this and then I write my proposal, is my proposal going to be a more CSR compliant proposal? Yes or no? If you can just respond on the chat box, I would like to hear. Would it be a more compliant CSR proposal if I am able to understand this grid which is made from the rules and which follows the law and you have read the policy of the company and you know you know your own constitution and most importantly, you know the need assessment on the ground. Then when you are going to write a proposal, you will write a solid one. And I can guarantee you, let me tell you, guarantee you, if you submit 10 proposals, one will and should convert minimum because you are doing good work on the ground. You're not novices. You are sector people. You're doing education. You're doing skilling. So getting some of these fundamentals right from the board of the NGO to your transparency and governance to understanding the CSR law to understanding accounting, audit and taxation matters prepares you for the CSR game like never before. Okay, now there is also a presentation made here. Uh, I think it is there in my other document is the um, one second. CSR FAQ, CSR rules. Huh, uh, one second. Yes, so this is Reporting format which the corporates now use. This is as of September 2022. If you see the name of the director is there, number of meetings of the CSR committee is required, number of meetings attended. They are also checking on the attendance of the board members. So can you have this kind of rigor in your own committee meetings, in your own board meetings? And this is the kind of information that they are asking. Okay, so all of this is very, very critical. So this in fact we've already discussed. So these are some of the rules that have been summarized in the CSR 2.0 amendment rules of 2021 and the detailed docket notification is this one, Shinu. Will you be able to share it with everybody? Share it. Oh, sorry, we will share it. Do you have a copy of this? Yeah, I have. Okay. Then I have also talked about Excel, I have told you. This Comviva thing I've told you, this committee thing I've shown you. FAQ is a very important document. Please use it as extensively as possible. Further understand the rules. You need to go through it one by one. It talks about, but most of what is written here has already been discussed by me today. So we've already covered all of it. But my advice is that you should also still read it. And uh, if you see reporting, we've done, we have saw the reporting format and then the, the, the disclosure of the CSR policy. All of this is covered under the CSR rules. So while these rules do not apply to you, it is important that you understand that what the corporate is going through. And this is your partnership of compliance with the corporate. I told you two things in the beginning. One is just doing good skilling. But if you do this also, then you are giving confidence to the donor that if you hire me, then your reporting to the MCA becomes easier. Will they not feel comforted by this? Tell me. If you know and you can give them this confidence, will they feel happy? Will they feel more confident? Tell me yes or no. So yes. I think Shinu, we yes, can sir. now take some questions because it's already 12.50. And uh, I will prepare Mudit in the meantime. But uh, 
let's have some questions on the chat box. And I'll just take a one minute breather to just go to the washroom once. I'll come back in a minute. Can people start writing questions on the chat box? And if Tanvi and um, Shinu, you can moderate this a little bit. Um, yes, sir, we will do that. You can, you can take up yes. some questions. I'll be back in a minute. My colleague will share an attendance link. Google for uh, Mudit, you can give the, the screen share to Mudit in the meantime. Mudit, you're we there. We have already given. We have already given. Mudit, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I'll just be back in a minute. And please keep uh, sharing your uh, your queries on the on the chat box. Yeah, we'll take up the questions. We have shared an attendance link that will uh, help us to share the information. Uh, you can fill that. We can fill all the information. Yeah, Mudit, you want to start now or? I can I can share my screen. Yeah. Yeah, you can start. Uh, let me know if you're able to see the screen. Yeah, yeah we can see the, the screen. Yeah. Uh, firstly, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. So I'll be presenting some data insights about CSR spending since the law came. And this is basically capturing 10 years of how CSR money has been spent all across India. So here you can see uh, this map of India is showing the percentage of the CSR money and on top, you can see since 2014 until 2021. So this data is coming from the government website, csr.gov.in. And uh, the latest that they have on the website is until 2021. So since 2014 to 2021, the reported data shows around uh, 127,618 crores of money have been spent in the CSR space uh, through different companies, through different eligible companies. On the map on the left hand side, you can see the percentage distribution of this total amount that is going in different states. Here you can see uh, there's a bit of disparity in the way the money has been uh, distributed. So in Maharashtra, you can see alone 14.619% of the total CSR money has gone since 2014. So which is 18,000, around 18,000 crores. And this is because a lot of the big companies, they have their head offices in Maharashtra, so they tend to uh, prefer spending locally also because so that they can go and monitor their CSR projects. So Maharashtra, you can see then, uh, you can see on the right side, there are some states where we have shown the percentage of CSR distribution. So the top five states, they've received a 33% of the total CSR money. So majorly uh, Gujarat, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Maharashtra. These are the states where uh, CSR money is going, is which is followed by the metro cities. Uh, in the metro cities, again, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Maharashtra, and Delhi and West Bengal are coming. And then the bottom five states where uh, the money has gone since the inception, it's Andaman and Nicobar, Lakshwadeep, Mizoram, Nagaland, and Tripura. Northeast, however, has received only 1.4% of the total CSR money, which is uh, around 1,700 crores uh, since 2014. And uh, Ministry of Northeast, which is the M Donor Ministry, they are also focusing and emphasizing a lot, even MCA, Ministry of Corporate Affairs, that uh, they're pursuing corporates to spend more CSR towards Northeast for the better development and strengthening of the state uh, there. On this slide, you can see, uh, so the previous slide was showing how the money has been spent uh, in different states. This is showing the main sectors where the CSR money is going again since 2014. So uh, companies are spending in education, livelihood, health, rural development, environment. And then of course there are some funds, one of the main ones, Prime Minister National Relief Fund. So since the inception, 25% has gone towards education and livelihood, 20% towards health, uh, eradicating hunger, poverty, malnutrition, safe drinking water, sanitation. Then 5% has gone towards environment. Environment is picking up recently because a lot of emphasis is going to renewable sources of energy and then green growth. So more companies are focusing towards this. Climate change is also happening. So environment is one big area. Uh, rural development also 5%. Uh, then sec 
sectors which are um, cons- under classified under others where companies are spending there are different funds so clean ganga fund is one then prime minister's care fund is one then other sectors where companies are spending is uh, encouraging sports gender equality art and culture and then slum area development if you see in terms of the quantification of number since 2014 around 30000 of crore 30000 crore have gone towards education and livelihood sector and then around 25000 followed by uh, health 25000 crore has gone towards the health sector so education livelihood health these are primary areas where companies are spending but again in the coming times uh, climate renewable energy uh those areas are also gender equality are picking up now this uh these are some statistics from financial year 2022 so here uh you can see there's a comparison of the csr quantum in financial year 2020 21 2021 and 2022 so this chart is also showing how much money on a yearly basis is flowing in the csr space so for example in financial year 2020 there was about 24966 crores which were there in the csr ecosystem that year then the next year which was financial year 2021 again 26000 so it went up a bit 26000 crores were there in the csr ecosystem and then in 2022 it went down a bit because uh, there was also covid so profits which were made by companies those also went a bit low so spending uh, the ecosystem spending went down a bit so it was around 25933 crore so in all this is showing this is approximately how much money on a yearly basis is uh, being invested through csr by companies that are eligible sustainability again as i mentioned is uh, gaining lot of traction and then environment projects those are also corporates are keen to uh look into innovative environment projects then pandemic of course prompted companies to sharply raise spending towards health then on the right hand side uh you can see based on in financial year 2022 these are some big companies that have been spending money so for example reliance they spend 800 crore itself so this is only one company and this is their csr spent for one year so in fi 2022 uh reliance spent 812 crores hdfc they spent 720 tcs 720 ongc 436 ntpc 357 so, so these are some of the big uh private companies and also uh private and public both that are spending in csr and have multiple csr projects that are going through the year uh this uh slide is showing so a sample of 1200 listed firms and this was the data was analyzed from financial year 2015 to 2022 now these are all listed companies that were eligible for csr and this uh, the first box is showing the trend that the csr money has been going up so this is the csr trend line so for example uh, the collective csr quantum for these 1205 firms in fi 2015 was 6500 crore but then over the years it went up because their profits business profits also went up so their csr money which had to be invested also kept going up so the same companies that were spending a total of 6500 in 2015 were ended up spending 14000 crores in uh, around 14000 crores in fi 2022 so this is basically indicating that even in the coming times as businesses grow and new businesses also become eligible the csr ecosystem will keep gaining more momentum and traction then there are different ways by which companies are spending money so uh, one is that they spend directly then they spend uh, by finding an implementation agency which can be an ngo or any eligible uh, entity that can receive the csr funding basis the law so here you can see so in 2022 so out of this 14801 uh, crores like 48 Point one percent of the money was spent through both modes, like through NGO partners and through company spending or investing directly through its own foundation and directly into the community. Then directly was just direct was twenty nine percent, and then 
just with implementation partner 20.2 percent of this entire money went towards ngos that were uh, executing projects then uh these are some of the main sectors in which the money was invested again this is fi 2022 this is the latest reported data so in education out of the total of 14000 crores uh 4436 went towards education and vocational skills projects then health hunger poverty and healthcare was the next one 4203 disaster management lot of money went environment sustainability around 1200 crores then rural development pm relief fund uh, reducing inequalities national heritage sports and others so these were some main uh, sectors where the money was going on the right you can see so 60 percent more than half of the money went towards education related education and healthcare related projects uh, through Lakshya, we also do a lot of analysis of how companies are spending money to show an example. So as you were showing, so this is again Reliance. So in 2020 and 21, this was the amount of money that they spent. So 922 crore was their CSR budget for one year. So and their key focus areas as per their CSR policy are uh, education, health and rural development projects. Now you can see uh, the sector-wise distribution. So Reliance ended up spending 450 crores just on education projects. Then they spent 49 on environment, 49 crores on environment and sustainability projects. Then there were 110 crores they spent on rural development projects. And then healthcare was, is also a big one. Around 300 crores they spent in healthcare. So this is just breakup of one year of spending of Reliance. Now, how did Reliance end up spending these uh, this much money? So they had 16 projects and then out of it, out of these 16 projects, uh, 62 percent, around 62 percent were done through other identified NGO partners. And then uh, out of the total CSR spent, 700 was spent via 700 crores were, was spent via implementing agencies. So that's a big amount which went to the uh, implementation partners. Then this, these are the main states where Reliance is spending, like investing the CSR money. So you can see 41.5% of the money went towards Maharashtra. Then other areas where they were spending were, were Andhra Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh. And then rest was uh, invested Pan India, 29.8% of the money. So this next one is IOCL. This is a public sector company. So they ended up spending... 445 CR in 2020, 2021 uh, financial year. Again, they have multiple sectors. Uh, so even public sector companies are spending, they're doing yes, are very properly, just like private sectors. So these are the different sectors. You can see again, 225 was spent towards. So they ended up spending more towards the National Relief Fund. So most of their money was going towards the fund. Then uh, 65 followed by education healthcare, then others, and then vocational skills is one area, rural development project is one area. So IOCL, they had 45 projects, and out of which 75.5% were done directly by the company. So as you can also see, most of the budget is being spent directly uh, to the fund. So that's why 75% there. And then out of the total CSR spend, uh, which is the 81 CR. So this is showing the distribution of IOCL. The next is, these are the geographies where IOCL ended up spending. Uh, Mudit, can you sum up and uh, people are some questions? Yes, yes. I just have one more slide. Yeah. So this is like the last slide and this is uh, the new set which came out of MCA and they were just emphasizing two main things. One was uh, government's intention to make CSR more robust as uh, they've asked all the utilization to be endorsed by chartered accountants. And the last is that uh, they're also putting in more emphasis on capacity building of NGOs because finding the right NGO partners for the corporate is difficult. But then once they find it, then they look for long-term partnerships. So this was uh, all from my side. Thank you, Shunu. I'll stop sharing. Uh, Sadh, uh, thank you, Mudir. Uh, there was so one Shino, question. Uh, I have been trying to respond to some of the questions. I got the time to respond, but if there are more questions, they are happy to take. Uh, 
couple of things i wanted to say on the the you know uh, the rule side while i have covered all the rules also uh, do read the gazette notification that i have shared with shinu uh, and remember that there are some activities which are not permitted under csr those like uh, you you cannot do for political parties you cannot use the money for own benefit of the own employees you cannot use csr for fulfilling other or other compliances like uh, rnr act you dig a hole to mine and you then fill it up with you know some work so csr not done you have to first complete the other access compliances and then come csr okay and uh, assets and surplus and all of this we've already discussed uh remember that sar is all about spending of money eventually it is about spending of money and if you are able to spend the money in the right way that is what compliance is all about and if you are able to do this in a in a way that uh, kind of uh, aligns with the requirement of the funder then as i say you to become an important player so we can stop here shinu and we can take some questions if there are very specific ones and open let's let's have an open house now there is one question uh, by alvin i you have uh, replied but this is common question one of the objectives of the trust has religion is one of the element does that qualify disqualify for csr application no it doesn't so disqualify it doesn't disqualify but it should not be the only one i have written so otherwise nobody is going to give you csr money the csr money will be given to complete schedule 7 activities in schedule 7 religion is not coming but if you do religion plus education and health and environment then you can say that we are doing these also and i have got my income tax 12a is is i am permitted by income tax 12a atg are mandatory you have to have them if you have fcra it is good because then that's a home ministry clear if you don't have fcra not to worry not to worry okay shinu yeah there is other question one is regarding the evaluation proposal what are the criteria some of them were asking what are the criteria which they look assess the proposals so when they are assessing the proposal they are looking at various things there are three critical things one is time money and outcome in within the time that you are saying can you spend this money and achieve this outcome your theory of change what is the in, input out input output outcome and impact when you do all of this is the child going to learn maths and science and will become will math learning become popular in the school will this develop a scientific temper so the evaluation and then there is a field visit also we often do field visits to evaluate whether what the proposal is saying is is there strength in the ground so do not hype yourself do not write things which are which you cannot do it is better to be honest and then say that this is what i am committing and also keep disclaimers subject to no covid subject to elections not hampering my work in quarter 1 of fy 24 25 so writing disclaimers have elbow rooms so there is a way to write the cost sheet also and this is what we can do shinu in more detailed sessions going forward because proposal writing is the key and there is a research before it so there is one question on complaints what are the complaints is they are asking again we have to follow up for getting csr project neha is saying so alvin says all our area of work under the aspirational district of india is there any data available which companies are have inclined towards this area yes yes aspirational niti ayog is has has come out with some very very uh, uh, alvin um, reports and we this is again part of your research we can also help you but uh, you can do your self research and find out then i am seeing that uh, neha there there is one question from father emmanuel and uh, hmm. father uh, vasant also father emmanuel if you want to ask question you can directly ask the pooling father uh, is to be avoided yes father please speak well, yeah uh, i am father emmanuel i am i am kerala uh, here we one ngo here, that is seva bharat he has formed he has formed a platform for all the ngos 
and uh, it is called national ngo confederation so he is uh, collecting all the ngos for uh, helping them to help themselves and through their help uh, they have formed uh, many district committees and the taluk committees and like that and state committees like that and through the the implementing and uh, uh, one of the agencies ngos can be or many agencies can be uh, implementing agencies those who have pakka uh, uh, the uh, fcri or uh, or the all the requirements so they are distributing uh, tailoring machines uh, computer and uh, vehicles for half of the rate and it is going on and it has been working last more than one year and more than thousands of uh, computer laptops thousands of machines and thousands of uh, the the scooters and uh, all are distributing now now in the mid, uh, all the district areas they are doing this do we uh, in a collective way is there any possibility of jesus to can do this kind of thing see i would suggest that you can pool at a headquarter level and and train the ngo rather than pool the money pool the knowledge because when you start pooling money the donor start getting a little jittery uh, this man he is not pooling he is contacting the uh, other companies and directly uh, uh, they are uh, through the ngos they are collecting the names and uh, all the process will be done by different ngos and through this those ngos where, where are the, implementing agencies so father where is the money going from the corporates to the individual ngos or to this main agency first individuals directly in the sense that the company themselves collect the uh, uh, the details so and i think you know this is what ngos so this is exactly what i had discussed with father sabashi also in and then shinu and everybody that if your headquarter at one place uh. can become a resource center yeah that resource center can do pan india research father sebasti yeah. and uh, that's where you can give advisories to the different regions yes, yes and then the funders can be moved towards those regions but the central office can be a repository of knowledge and compliances etc or maybe guidance on compliances yeah and uh, that's where uh, so that is doable but the money should not come to the headquarter no the it money is not from csr will go to the respective ngo yeah the half uh, the Now, let will... me tell you. Let me tell you. The headquarter can also raise resources for yeah. capacity building. Okay. That can be a CSR activity. Yeah. Under um. promoting education, like for example, HCL Foundation course is being done, and we are training so many people, and yeah. they are doing it through CSR. It is possible. Okay. Sir, thank you so much for the. Father Vasant Kumar has something to say. Uh, sir thank you so much for the presentation it was good uh, my one question is i have already written also so sometime now they they look for a particular uh, geographical region you said it's, uh, it's not uh, in the rules and they have uh, is uh, possible but even then i approached the uh, hcl uh, foundation in chennai and then uh, they said uh, it's uh, it's uh, geographical and it's uh, limit uh, it's through our own uh, premise if it is not you are submitting a bigger project it will go to the head office so that's what the response they give so can you throw a little light on this what is the local uh, they can do it and what is the head level at the end of the day father they can do it in any part of the geography of india eventually it's a dialogue between you and them the law is not restricting you at all i've already shown you the faqs now whether they will do it or not i can't decide because it has to be decided by the company how convincing you are that you have to decide but under the law all doable i'm okay. telling you na ongc funding us in kashmir has no meaning there is no oil in kashmir okay but they are doing it and they are getting the benefit also okay so i think we have shinu a few i think sister uh, Sister Gracie has some question which has not been looked into. What is that, Sister? Can you just speak out? Father John, can two NGO become implementing partner for one project and can share that we based on NGO? Yes, absolutely, you can. I'm. We are in fact already doing a project with a funder which has got ten NGOs for the same project, and each one of us reporting to that corporate. So that is all doable. Okay. 
So sister, uh, I can't see your question. Shinu, can you see her question? She's mentioned. She can ask directly. I think. I just her asked her, but she is not responding. I don't know where she is. Can you share the Our colleague is sharing the question. So the sister Sneha says that few funders in Mumbai are saying because of elections and political. Yes. So the next three months are a little kind of you know shaky for everyone. So maybe I am seeing that try and get uh... your lineups. Yes, yes, sister. Yes, uh, it's uh, it's not just a last three months uh, thing. Uh, it's been last three years I am trying uh, in Mumbai to get some funders like. Mm. And each time, uh, even the Reliance, even the Megamart, even a few companies, HCL and everyone, uh, they only gave me... Can't hear you. Gave, uh, because of the political reason... Uh, you like and others say we do not have the branch in your area so we can't support it that's it i couldn't hear you properly sister but i will only say this that uh you have to keep trying you know and there is no sure shot yes or a sure shot no it is you have to be a little bit more prepared also from what i'm gauging from the audience here today i think you are not prepared as yet on csr and uh maybe maybe they're not getting the confidence while they're speaking with you that could also be there. We should not discount the donor's understanding of your capability because they might not be feeling confident about you. I'm not hearing them right now. I'm only hearing your side of the story. So uh, as a third party assessor, when I'm teaching this whole class and I'm asking questions and I'm hearing your responses, it is evident that uh, there is lack of knowledge, but you are also doing good work. So I am seeing that it is doable. It is not an impossible thing. And some of you may be doing CSR also. Can you please suggest some corporate funders? Yes, there are corporates like you know, Tech Mahindra Foundation, HCL Foundation, Cisco, Wipro, Azim Premji Group. All, all of these, there are big, big ones. You know, and through the Lakshya Insight, we can share a document, maybe Mudit, about the key funders who are funding Pan India. We can do that. And it can be shared with you. There are Pan India funders. That's not a problem. So I think we can wind up. The time has already crossed the limit. Yeah, yeah, we've already crossed <laughs> the limit, I know. And uh, I, it was a real pleasure, uh, Father Sebastian and everybody here, and Shinu and 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 Tanvi, you know, help for, thank you for helping me out. Uh, I hope it was not indigestion. I tried to, you know, simplify it as much as I could. Uh, and as often happens, you know, in such situations, I feel a little dissatisfied with myself because I need more time. And But then also, one should not have breakfast, lunch and dinner at the same time also. It will lead to indigestion. So I have tried to give you broad sense. We can share some documents again, Shinu, with you, yeah. which you can circulate. But remember, this is the tip of the iceberg. You... The, the, it, it, it's an entire game. It's like an entire ball game. And the video showed you how it should all come together and the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So while we cook it and we have to put in all the ingredients, but if the food is not cooked, then the funding is not going to come. So it, take this as a preliminary step. Do some reflection. Do some you know studies. And then one can take things forward from there. And, and over to you. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, my responsibility to say what of thanks, but I take two, three, say in two, three lines. I can see a lot of faces. They are ready to embark on a journey towards our, our delicious destination on CSR. Uh, I think I thank Nikhil sir for helping us. He is well known in the industry as the father of CSR industry. And I thank you all the participants and my technical team who has helped us to make the day. Uh, we are sharing all the information. Don't worry about that many are asking. Uh, we will share all the information. Once again, I thank you all. Uh, I welcome uh, Dr. Sebastian Raj for the concluding remarks. So, Mr. Nikhil, on behalf of all the participants, I'd like to thank you, first of all, for making your, you and your son, Mudit, for making yourself available. 
what I was expecting from you has been achieved. I'm happy to say that because I was only expecting you to give a stimulant to this whole thought of CSR. I'm fully aware of our level of knowledge, our level of compliances we have already shared. We would like to take off from here to help different organizations. Since we are at the coordinating level, our job is that to help each organization or each unit to be able to prepare this uh, CSR projects or applications and then get it done. And this is what we will do either online or actually also offline. So this we are already planning. So for that, this has been a very good input and very good stimulation. So thank I you, thank you for that. And we look forward to further collaboration in the future. And I like to thank all the participants. Very overwhelming type of interest shown by different people. <clears throat> in fact, we have more than 250 participants. Some are on YouTube, some are here. So thank you very much for all. And we'll be in touch with you. We'll be also communicating with you. Whatever we can share, we'll, whatever we have collected data and so on, we can share with you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Father. It was a real pleasure and an honor. And uh, look forward to you know engaging further with the entire uh, you know the the groups and the organizations who are here. And what I can see is this that the sky is the limit, and maybe this is just the start. And uh, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity. Thank you once again. Sir, there is a request from our technical team. Uh, I request all participants to switch on the video uh, and camera. Then they need to take a photograph. I request all, please. Hello, Alvin. All the photos won't come. <laughs> We'll try yeah, all the screen we can take. Hey, take something and Father, it's okay. We have done. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We have shared feedback for please give us the feedback Thank you, you, Thank you Nikhil, sir, once again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks to all. Thanks to Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.